Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, February 25th. Uh, a quick reminder to everybody, you know, uh, that our library is in a vicious competition with Belmont, Lexington, and Somerville for uh, which of us can sign up the most number of people for their library cards. We beg you, please, before the end of February, uh, is it 7, what's the last? Uh, 28th. February 28th at 8.45 p.m., to please go to the library and sign up for a library card. It won't hurt you, but it will, it will, it will help us uh, significantly. So item number one, for the consent agenda, which are the minutes of the meeting for February 11th, an appointment of new election workers, Gene Griffin and Charles uh, Seamus, uh, both of, uh, uh, for Precinct 12. Move approval. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Uh, Selectman Mahan will not be able to be with us this evening. Um, she is, uh, and her cheerleading team, Marie, are participating in a state competition. It was canceled from yesterday. Yep. Yeah. Didn't feel the need to ask me to compete, apparently, <laughs> so they probably have a chance of winning. Uh, we, we are going to have a public hearing, but uh, I'm going to take up two items, very qu which are quick items just before that. Uh, public hearing on CDBG, and the first is to welcome back here a gentleman who graced uh, this hall uh, as a former selectman, and he has served as a chair of our selectman awards committee. So let me call to the microphone Mr. Jack Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Pleasure to be here. Uh, we're submitting to the board um, our nominations for the town honor awards, and um, as I mentioned at the last uh, visit I came a few weeks ago, uh, we had an outstanding group of individuals that were nominated. Uh, we spent some time going through them, of course, and uh, come up with some recommendations for the Board of Selectmen. And um, so I want to present to you all of the nominations so you have them, including the ones that we're recommending uh, for your review. And uh, ultimately, of course, you folks will decide uh, who is awarded the awards. Uh, the date, I think, um, you folks are going to have a conversation. At some point, it's going to somehow uh, dovetail with the uh, anniversary of Town Hall. So I believe uh, that may be on your next uh, yeah, discussion. It, it will either be uh, towards late spring or perhaps early fall. But yes, we are trying to tie it into that. But we, we will discuss that and get a, get a date together. So the process from here is we take these nominations from the committee, and thank you very much to you and your committee for uh, having done such a great job, Jack. And uh, then this board uh, will discuss, and uh, perhaps if there are other nominations from this board, but, uh, and then these awards will be given out, as I say, at a ceremony uh, in, in uh, the very near future. So, Mr. Chair, I move uh, receipt of the uh, nominations of the Selectman Awards Committee. Okay. Second. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. And so, Jack, these are all the nominations. Uh, this is the detail. You gave us that matrix, I know. Thank you, David. <coughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Okay, and next we have an appointment to the Allenton Committee on Tourism and Economic Development. And we ask people when they're first appointed to committees to uh, please come before the board. Um, and so let me call Paul Dredge forward. Mr. Dredge. Welcome. Here. Yes, sir. Okay. There are millions watching at home, Paul. So we want to be sure Hi, that everybody. they get to see that, uh, <laughs> that all of them get to see you. But uh, uh, thank you for your willingness to serve. I've often said volunteers are the lifeblood of the town of Arlington. 
and this is a committee that we are particularly excited about. Are, are you as well, sir? And so am I, yes. I've Any particular uh, reason that you have this interest? or? Well, I've lived in Arlington since 76. Wow. Raised five kids, three of whom still live in town and have children and are married. Mm -hmm. And what's wrong with the other two? Time, well, Will they be coming one back? <laughs> <laughs> one moved to Northampton and one moved to Texas. Yeah. Oh. But I thought it was time to give back, so this sounded like a really interesting thing to do and an important thing to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm here. Thank you very much for your willingness to do that. Uh, comments, questions from the board? Uh, uh, Mr. Curo. Oh. Yeah, I just wanted to say that. Yeah, my, myself, um, as, as liaison of this board to the, the ATED and uh, Angela Olszewski, um, the chair of the, uh, the uh, Tourism Economic Development Committee, uh, interviewed all of the, the candidates and we were very pleased to uh, recommend to the board um, Mr. Dredge's, um, uh, Dr. Dredge, I'm sorry, Dr. Dredge's um, uh, appointment. So I, I would move to appoint uh, Paul Dredge as a member of the Arlington Committee on Tourism and Economic Development. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Um, a second, sorry. He got, he, Oh, he got in there ahead of you on the <laughs> make of the he motion. He did it well, but far better. Okay. <laughs> any, any other comments or questions? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you, Dr. Dredge. Thank you Thank very you. much. Take care, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for living in Arlington since 76, by the way, too. <laughs> it's been great. I have to run to a rehearsal. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so our seven, this is a public hearing. First of all, we're going to have a report on CDBG a performance update for this past program year uh, 2012, and we're still in it 2013. Carol, I assume. Thank you for the opportunity to present the update and the request for the next program year. Uh, We'll go to the request first. Um, you're probably accustomed so to. So you're going to do the request. What are you saying? Are you reporting on the year first, or? Well, the report. Um, we can we can do the report first. Um, we have. We've submitted um, reports that were provided by the recipients, including um, recreation. Re reporting on the scholarship program. They've received, uh, to date, they've dispersed uh, $1,565 to three individuals and families for the Recreation Scholarship Program. Uh, for the Jobs, Jobs, Jobs Program, Arlington Recreation Fidelity House and the Boys and Gr Girls Club have dispersed by January $4,000 to five individuals for those programs. And North Union Basketball Court received 59000 to assist with the renovation of the basketball court at the North Union Field. And Arlington Youth Hockey Scholarship Program allocated $5,300 to seven individuals for scholarships, for hockey scholarships. Um, Housing Corporation of Arlington is a little detailed, but... Um, I don't know if I can summarize this, but most of what they've worked on um, is Capitol Square. The uh, apartments, you're, f you're familiar with, uh, I think a lot of you are at the ribbon cutting. I'm gonna try to go through these quickly. Just wanna skip around and give you some highlights. Arlington Youth Counseling Center provided CWG assistance to 28 eligible clients to date this fiscal year for the amount of $15,425. I think we already talked about this. That, that, those are some of the highlights for public services. We for the coming fiscal year, we don't know, yet know what our allocation will be. Uh, that's not unusual for this time of year. Our current allocation for the current program year is a million twenty thousand eight hundred eighty-seven. We've been—it's been recommended to us that we operate under the assumption that we'll have a ten percent cut. So, if you add 
projected programming income of $150,000, we are operating under the assumption that we'll have a million sixty-eight seven ninety-eight to disperse for requests. The total of requests received is a million three hundred seventy-six four forty-eight. I'm sorry. What was that number? A million three hundred seventy-six thousand four hundred forty-eight. Thank you. Uh, and that is $725,000 for housing, affordable housing. For public services, we've received about $250,000 in requests. For public facilities and improvements, $197,000. Planning is requesting $94,300. And for administration, we're uh, going to need $110,630. That sounds like actually lower requests than usual. I think they are a little lower than usual. I think that our, a lot of our recipients have observed the pattern of decreased allocations, and I think they've adjusted knowing, uh, this is my conjecture, but I think they have seen that they can't expect the requests to increase when the allocations have not okay. even stayed level. Hmm. Carol, excuse me, but the memo we have says planners, the request is for 40,000. Did you just say 110,000? The planning category, the request oh, is 94,300. Okay. Okay. Um, so for planner the staff, whole category, I got you. it would right. be 40,000, okay. right. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair? Yes. I was Mr. wondering, if I can indulge, I'm wondering just for, um, we obviously are all familiar with this program. I, I was wondering if for the folks who are listening at home or, or here, if you might set the table with a, just a couple sentences about the CDBG, what it is, where it comes from, and what it can be used for, just, just, just for sure. in the interest of folks who are trying to follow along. The, Department, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development has administered uh, the Community Development Block Grant Program for uh, communities that have a percentage of their population that meets uh, the definition of low or low income. We have received community development block grant funds since the 70s, since the program's inception. We are, Arlington is what's called an entitlement community. Um, we, not every community gets a guarantee of funds every year. Arlington does, and that, that's been hard fought, actually, uh, over, uh, over time. There are a number of communities that get to compete for community development block grant funds. We don't get that, we get this. So um, it's just two different ways that HUD administers these funds. Thank that's, you. Yeah. No, thank that, you. That's a little. Um, and bit they're of to be distributed across a series of categories, uh, but to uh, assist low and moderate income neighborhoods specifically, right? That's right. And the cat these are specific categories, and there are some um, criteria for each and some limits on how much of the total can be spent in two of these categories. Right. I, I, I just always like to point out at, at the, on the CDBG, we, what a debt of gratitude we owe, Carol uh, uh, referenced this, what a debt of gratitude we owe to Tip O'Neill, Alan McLennan, and Charlie Lyons. These um, community development block grants uh, entitlements are to communities with a population of 50,000 plus. And when Arlington went below 50,000, um, uh, they went in to Tip O'Neill, and, and he was able to, and uh, through the work of Carol and Adam and others, continuing through the years. So we, even though a population of about 43,000, we still get approximately a million dollars a year in funds. Uh, and you'll hear in a moment from a number of excellent causes uh, around town of people who request these kind of funds. But. Uh, Sorry, I just... No, thank you. I think that's worth moment. remembering. Um, we, we, we are fortunate that we have a, a diverse community, uh, and we want to continue to serve everyone in this community, and these funds really help us to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, so... Um, Next, we'll hear from applicants, or is, is that what you want to do next, Carol, or do you want to, uh, do you know, like, right, can you tell me, right, I, I know you're saying we don't know the exact amount we're going to get, but do you know how much is being requested? I mean, normally it's like twice as much, right? 
The but requests right that. now are million um, three hundred seventy-six thousand four forty-eight. Really? Does that include the one we just got? Uh, thank you. Um, that's right. We just got um, the housing authority request, oh, that, which is a, um, that's significant. That's for six hundred thousand. Yeah. So that that's ups right. that figure. Six hundred thousand. Okay. So it's close. That's that's what it normally is. It's closer to double what we get in requests for what we're actually given, right? Uh, yes. Okay. That one just came in. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so, right, we want to hear now from those who, are, who have come to make application. That's it's right. Not, it, it's not required. Uh, the paperwork is required. But uh, so. Uh, I just want to move receipt on the report of what okay. we've heard about so far, and then let's hear about the. Okay. So second. 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 All those in favor, please. Oh, more discussion on just receipt. Receipt. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you, Carol. Okay, so anybody here who would get <laughs> What a night for those who have formally graced these chambers. Clarissa Rowe. Gentlemen, it's, it's a real pleasure to be here. I'm Clarissa Rowe, and I'm here um, as, okay, and this is Janet O'Riordan, um, who is, we're here for the old Schwab Mill. Okay. Um, Janet called me tonight as I got a, walked in the door and asked if I would come. <laughs> um, I'm on the advisory board of the Old Schwab Mill. And as you know, Arlington is very blessed. Joe knows because he's part of the Arlington Economic Development and Tourism Committee. Um, Arlington has some ex outstanding historic resources. And one of the unknown treasures um, is the Old Schwab Mill. And it is still visited very heavily. And um, there's a little problem getting to the second floor. So that's what this request is. And Janet's going to talk more about the details of it. But I think you'll see um, more and more that we'll be coming to you with um, requests for trying to upgrade our historic resources. Um, I'm actually going to the FinCom to try to get some historic signage money for next year. So, um, But this is a terribly important part of bringing business and people to Arlington. So I will now turn it over to Janet. But before you do that, I wonder, Ms. Rowe, would you comment on the uh, comparison of the chairmanship of the Board of Selectmen last year versus the chairmanship of the Board of Selectmen this year? Have you noticed any differences? I'm just... Um, I will be frank with you, Mr. Greeley. <laughs> um, this is the first time I have been back in this room and I ha haven't actually watched any meetings. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure that if I did, I would have a comment on that. So I, I move we reject this request. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, thank you, Chris. You know I love you. Janet, and yeah. I'm nowhere near the chairman you were. Janet, excuse me, please. Should I type out anything? Oh, did they all have the application? I think, no, I haven't found it yet, but. We don't have okay. Fishwam. And then these are as well. Hi, um, I'm a longtime volunteer at the Schwam Mill and on the board. And I'm here today because we are, um, need a second egress for the Schwam Mill. Um, we already have one staircase, but I, I don't know if all of you are familiar with the Schwam Mill. Thanks. Are you familiar? We're in a picture frame factory, 1864 picture frame factory and um, uh, industrial museum. And uh, over the years, we've been trying to become a greater cultural and educational resource to the town of Arlington. Um, we've transformed a major part of our second floor into a, an art gallery, and we now host uh, four different exhibitions, uh, art exhibitions every year featuring local artists. And um, we have numerous uh, public events practically every month, whether they're concerts or lectures or um, art workshops or open houses. And um, we also invite a lot of groups in, um, educational groups, students. And in fact, um, one of the uh, things that I'm sending around is a, uh, is a, a, a recent newsletter from the Audison st uh, students. The seventh grade technology students all come to the mill. Over 300 come to the mill every year for a tour. So we've really increased our numbers over the years. Um, Ten years ago, we might have had two or 300 visitors a year at the mill. And now we have probably two to 3,000 people that come to the mill. And um, so it's become very apparent to all of us who work at the mill, who, um, who work at the mill, who volunteer at the mill, that we really need a second egress. We would have one 
egress, but it's not enough for public safety. And so we're here um, hoping that maybe the town could help us uh, fund a second egress. Um, and um, I guess that's about it. it. I have the information there, how much it's going to cost, and uh, uh, architectural fees, construction fees. And we're hoping to do this hopefully soon because really we are having a lot of visitors and we do need to have a, a second egress, a, 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 you know, a good set of stairs also for older. We do have a lot of older people that come to the mill as well and our stairs that we have now are a little bit old and steep and so it would be much better too to have a, a nice set, of, a new uh, modern set of stairs for, for our visitors. So I guess that's all. Thank you very much. And so for the questions? stairs and the, and the new exit, you're at 33,530? Yes, that, that the includes, okay. the, yes, architectural fees and the construction and oversight, everything to have the set, second set of stairs. Okay, so any other questions at all? Or? Question. Um, is there a subcommittee of CBDG people? Yes, there are. And, and who's on it now? Ah, if you two would like to have a tour of the mill, we would love to give you one. <laughs> And, and, and yes. others who might be interested in such a thing? Uh, well, yes, we would love to give you a, a tour. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You'd especially like me at the top of those old stairways, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Janet. Go ahead, please. Yes, we're open up, the, we'll open up for you. Yes, please, we would love to have you come for, to, for a tour of the mill and see our wood turner who still comes down every Tuesday from Maine and crafts our, 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 our frames. We're still making frames as well, um, you know, really fine craft and museum quality type frames and uh, so we want to you know we have a lot going on at the mill right now yes so just I, I obviously just looking at this now so the um, the trust is that a 501c3 or is it yeah we're a nonprofit yes okay and um, we don't charge admission we, you know it's all donations that come to the mill and um, we just depend on visitors you know giving donations um, okay yes Joe um, yeah, I was just wondering, given that you're on the National Register of Historic Places, does that create any impediments to architecturally changing the uh, building? Um, actually, um, unfortunately not. Um, we did actually, in, in fact, it included with the attachments. Ten years ago, we had actually uh, entertained the idea of putting a staircase in at the time, yeah. and we went through a Mass Historical Commission, and uh, they approved the, set of, the second stairs. Mm -hmm. So their approval letter is there, and they've been notified that now we really want to, we really need to see the need for an egress at this point. Um, yeah. So we have their approval, so there shouldn't be any problem as far as mm -hmm. with the second egress. Great. Thank you. And, um, okay. I'll check. Actually, I have yeah. one question. It's, um, it talks about a little bit about uh, handicap accessibility in here. Is there um, any plans to? Um, we can put a. Um, ramp a little mm. bit of ramp for the first floor for, there's one little step to get into the whole ground floor but it, as far as I don't think that it's one. not it's not it's, really accessible it's okay. not you and they're doing this is a step-by-step -step process um, really what they need probably is um, well the the um, the main entrances can easily be fixed mm. there are a number of sets of steps that um, would have to have ramps Okay. So it's it's possible, but it's you know this is this is the first step to try to get people safely to the second floor, and then the ADA um, work will have to come second. Great, thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank, you, thank very you very much. much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and so everybody's clear. The process from here is uh, that all of these applications, and of course, once we know the specific amount. Uh, and this subcommittee will meet with Carol uh, and uh, come back to this board. The five members of this board and the town manager, we're the six who actually vote on these. We do go to town meeting with our, recommend, with our uh, vote and ask for their um, uh, blessing on that vote. Okay, who, el who else would like to speak? Okay, yes, I pay you. And if you would please identify yourself right away and the amount you're asking for right away, if you would please. I'm sure this is this the excellent program we funded before. Peggy. Hi, my name is Peggy Regan, and this is Janet McGuire, and we are co-founders of the Operation Success Homework Center that we run in um, down in Monotony Manor. We come every year, so you probably know our story, but I'll just briefly fill you in. Uh, we st this is our 15th year. Um, we are open four nights a week. We do homework support for the students in Monotony Manor, who live in Monotony Manor. Um, 
we average usually between 15 and 20 kids a night. It gets a little crazy, mm. but we're pretty tough, mm. so that's not usually a problem. Um, but Jan and I started this 15 years ago, but we couldn't have done it, first of all, without you people for helping us with the grant, so we appreciate that. The Arlington Police, who have always been very supportive of us, and also the Arlington Housing, because they give us the apartment. <clears throat> we also couldn't do it without the volunteers. It's strictly volunteers. It's been volunteers straight for 15 years. So I'd like to just publicly thank, if you just bear with me for a minute, retired teachers from Arlington, Sue Nicella and Barbara Weba, current teachers from Audison, Travis Woodward, Rachel Parkin, Julie Keyes, Judy Packer, Jason Levy, Jennifer Fernandez, Randy Flynn, Matt Coleman, and Stephanie Carlson. I mean, they teach all day, and then they come down there. They're amazing, and they're very happy to be there. They're pleasant, so that's nice. Community members, Carol Whitney, Dee Savioli, Chris Doyle, and Ethel Doyle, and we have a student volunteer, Danny Bianchi. So again, we couldn't do it without them, so we appreciate them. That's why we want to tell, you know, publicly thank them. And now Janet will fill you in on the highlights of the year. Oh, and the request is for six thousand dollars. Yes, okay. it is. That's her. That's yep. her. Pie. Oh, sorry. Should oh, that's okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, go, Janet. <laughs> we'd like to thank you very much. We have the new computers, Dan Sheen and David Good. Um, I cannot thank them both enough, and for you people um, for allowing that this year. The computers just enhanced the program tremendously because of the academic demands of school. The computers are all up and running and working well. So thank you very much for doing that because we couldn't have done that within the grant um, amount last year. So thank you. Um, this past year, we have 28 kids right now signed up for the program. We've been, um, we have about six high school students that continue to come down, applying for colleges, um, asking for help for college applications, asking how to do FAFSA forms and all of these fun things that we do for our own kids. <laughs> now we're doing it for our own other kids. <laughs> um, this year is, so far has been very successful. Um, we have had cultural events. We had one cultural event that we didn't use CD, um, BG grants for because um, we never can do that. So we had our own fundraiser and we took them into Boston Lifeline Ambulance was so generous, and they took us in. So the kids enjoyed that. It was Did they a use sirens? Hmm. Excuse me? Did you use sirens? Yes, yes. <laughs> no, we got the luxury bus. <laughs> OK. Um, before, we've had the sirens going. Um, this year, we've also had um, student nights, and for girls' nights separate, and then a boys' night separate, for anything to talk about domestic abuse, um, also what's going on in their lives, to set goals, to, to move on, to see what's out there for them, instead of just getting settled. The students have, we're seeing academic gains with the students. We feel that they're really progressing, they're buying into the program for themselves, and you know, just to see where and what they want to do with their lives. They're not just settling as middle school students, they're becoming very mature. This year also we're asking, um, a lot of the kids' families cannot afford backpacks and summer reading books. So we are putting that in the grant for this year because we've had to do that um, you know, on a supplement, on another way. And I need to thank, and I, I'm sorry on this, is Anna Witten. Anna Witten has been fabulous with us. Um, so I need to thank her very, very, very much. So, and she guides us. We cannot go over this, we can't do this, <laughs> so thank you. But this year we are asking, because some of the kids are going to school without backpacks, and some of the kids do not have reading books for the summer. Um, it's a different life, and we need to help them, you know, because they are part of the Arlington community. We'd love to have you come down some night. I know you guys are very busy, but we'd love to have you come down and visit. It's a wonderful organization, and I just keep on seeing it improving. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, Janet. Sounds like you do quite a bit with that money. Thank you so much. Next. Hello, my name's Lisa Urban. I'm the Youth uh, Program Director at Fidelity House. And we run a pretty unique program that 
um, we can only do with the assistance of the CDBG. And you guys have been incredibly helpful in the past and hopefully this year too. Um, oh, we don't have this one. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. Hmm. <laughs> we can still quiz you. <laughs> you can just say read it. Um, just so people who don't know what we do, um, we try to make it an inclusive year-round program to try to offer as many opportunities as, as we can for kids in Arlington that live down at Manami Manor. So during the summer, we have a summer day camp that's um, off-site, that they have swimming lessons. Uh, they just It's a true old-fashioned camp experience. And uh, we go down in the mornings, pick them up in the school bus, bring them to camp. We use over $8,000 of the money that you give us for a scholarship so they can come to camp and then drive them back at the end of the day by the school bus. And then during the school year, we go down, pick them up on Tuesdays, bring them to Fidelity House, they get free memberships. Um, pretty much whatever program they'd like to do, they apply to join in, whether it's a basketball team or first or fourth grade um, sports programs or whatever programs that we're offering that financially their family could not afford to do. And then, you know, we bring them back on, during the school year back. That's what we found was travel was a hindrance to them participating. So we make sure that we get them back. And then we also run an on-site program. So we can try to meet the needs of all different ages. And we really, through middle school, um, see those kids. And then they come back, whether they work at our day camp during the summer. But it really is a, a great program that we see the kids from the time they're little. And it's a stable environment that they're always in. And they just, you know, they're part of the community then. And it, it just, it, it's a great program, and we can't do it without the CDBG, and I don't want to take it for granted, so I want to make sure I'm here every year and, and uh, make sure you guys are aware of it. So thank you very much. Before you, you were born, I attended that camp. Hmm. The, the day camp? Yeah, I did. And 58 I, years. I literally, and I'm 62 now, so you can imagine how long ago this was. I think I was camper of the mid-afternoon siesta break or something. <laughs> I won some award, but I can't quite remember what it was. I don't was. know any kids that sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but, we and, don't have um, any of those. <laughs> but good job as always, Lisa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Anybody else wishing to make application? Or? We, we, have, we have, I guess, another 20 in front of us, would you? Is that, a, is that a fair statement? Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, it's just that uh, all applicants need to follow, and many of them are um, applicants from previous years. Again, the subcommittee will meet, discuss uh, with Carol's guidance, and, and uh, Anna telling us what we can and what we can't do, as always, and then it will be brought, brought back here. Carol, closing thoughts or anything? Or? Just quickly to say that um, it looks like we do have additional requests, obviously, so that amount will go up, and we'll work on that in the subcommittee. Yeah. But thank you very much for the opportunity. You can see an example of uh, the impact that these funds have. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Actually, I do have a Carol, I'm, I'm sorry. Do, yeah, go ahead, I'm Carol. sorry, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Um, what actually, is there a literal deadline? Because obviously, I know we're going to start considering these probably later this week or next week. Is there a, a or, I mean, is it t truly rolling, or do, is there a? a uh, no, um, I. It, well, it was the twentieth, but okay. I, I'll I'll take them until Wednesday, I think, because we don't meet. It might stop me if I'm. Uh, yeah, to accept applications. Okay. Right. Got if it. you couldn't hear uh, her at home, uh, they need to be received now or it's closed. So, Got that. Okay. I, I had a question earlier this afternoon, and so I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Yeah, we usually ex expect that they're in by this hearing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your excellent work. Okay. And I believe we already moved receipt on this. I don't think we did on the actual 
Um, I move receipt of on the, the application. New applications. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Okay, a discussion, water and sewer service, uh, Gordon Jameson. Uh, good evening, yes, I'm, I'm, my name is Gordon Jameson. I am the co-chair of the Vision 2020 Fiscal Resource Task Group. I apologize, uh, David uh, um, Gabarino could not be here, work kept him late. Um, Mr. Howard, our secretary, is down the hall doing his FinCom duties, as uh, Mr. Dunn realizes. Um, Heather Remoff is, is here, though, a member of our group. Uh, Scott Lever and uh, Jonathan Houghton also couldn't make it due to uh, work and other volunteer activities. So we're a busy group just like you all. So for, for you at home that don't really know what Vision 2020 is, you probably all get a census insert survey. And we're part of the group that's uh, the greater part of the bylaw-enabled Vision 2020, a bunch of different committees and sub subgroups or task groups that work to come up ways to make Arlington a better place. And our little task group, the, vis the physical resource task group, looks at things that uh, um, others don't. So in the past, we've done two retrospective financial analyses of town expenditures, once before the first most recent override, another before the second most override that's helped in the planning and um, understanding how, how performance happened. We've worked with the assessors to in increase the um, visibility and transparency of their website. Um, we've uh, more recently, Heather had a very nice series in The Advocate last spring. You might have read four or five series about taxation policy and assessment policy that we're continuing to work on. Um, and we've had an interest in water and sewer um, over the years. Um, so we wanted to share with you um, our thoughts on um, an issue that came up at town meeting last year that Mr. Rademacher um, remarked in passing that 25 to 30 percent of our water um, is not metered, meaning we don't really know where it goes or certain buildings are not metered. And we have, uh, to summarize quickly, because I shared this with uh, the manager previously, and I think Mr. Rademacher will speak in a couple moments, and I think we're aligned pretty much on most things. We have some high um, priority items, which are making sure that we're not being overbuilt by the MWRA. It turns out that meters don't last forever. And after 20 years, they really start letting a lot of the water flow by without twirling. So that's an important issue. Um, our records looking at just stuff that you can get online pretty quickly. Um, after 25 years, the metering rate may only be 87% um, or less. Um, Obviously, broken water mains happen all the time. I don't know if we're accounting for our estimates on how much water leaks when we have a large break. We have, obviously, water leaks, and there's an ongoing replacement program. We flush hydrants in the spring and the fall now. I don't know if we actually attempt to calculate how much water is going there. Um, and while the manager believes all town uh, buildings and schools are metered, um, I don't know whether that's, we don't know whether that's actually the case. So we have a couple of different um, thoughts on what could be, could be done. Uh, most of these, I think Mr. Redermacher will, will tell us, are uh, in process. Is that pretty much correct, what you think, believe, Adam? Yeah, or, well, 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 finish. well, well uh, finish. The things yes, that the, I believe they are. But, go ahead, yes. but um, the things that the board can do, okay, is, so obviously, if we're going to institute, say, a, a water meter replacement program, that's, there's going to be some funding required for that. Um, one way to do that is to move to quarterly billing. We've had this discussion before. We had hoped to present the concept of sticking the water bill and the tax bill. That's against MGL laws. But uh, we, we believe that that's the way to go because it's going to give us a one-time um, cash flow of about one quarter of our metered ratings, three or four million dollars, and that would en enable us to stabilize the water and sewer fund while we work to plug leaks, make sure we're being billed the right amount, and for fairness, making sure that the, the users are being all being billed using good meters so that someone's not getting a good deal while someone has a brand new meter that's been installed, so we have a differential there. So, so um, the, we spoke to the treasurer about this, and, and he could implement quarterly billing if the board so, 
so measured, uh, desired. And we think this is actually, a, um, since we can't do the um, double billing to save further on mailing costs, we think this would be an excellent way to move towards um, electronic billing because the, the water bills can be billed electronically. People could say, I want, don't want a paper bill, I want an electronic bill. I'm sure Mr. Dunn would be the first in line for that. <laughs> and then, of course, we could um, promote more electronic payment so that long term this could be a nice test case to see whether that type of system works um, well for other things. Um, so, so as far as that goes, that's, oh, the other, the other issue that would be helpful for us to begin to implement at the same time is the new water uh, meters basically allow us to, we could measure them now and we could measure them 10 seconds from now. Well, I don't suggest that, but it would be nice if there was a system enabled where um, the users could go on a regular basis and check to see how uh, their water usage is progressing. I know David thinks that he'd be on that all the time, telling his daughter to take shorter showers or maybe not watering the yard quite as much in the summer. So um, that's pretty much it. So I, I'm open for questions and for response from Mr. Rodemacher. He wishes. And it, will you let us run the meeting, Gordon? Thank you, though. Do, any questions for Gordon? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Dunn. Uh, just, Gordon, so um, I'm, I'm sure Mike's going to talk about this, but we have a, he, the DPW has hired a consultant to look at the water usage. Were you here when he came and met the board, or did you, did you see that on TV? No, I did not, and my impression was that was more about um, rates than actually the things we're, we're, we're talking about. I actually think it's both, but why don't we see what the... So, Mike can speak to this as well, but um, I met the Fiscal Resources Task Group on this issue, what, some two, three months ago now? Maybe last spring, or, either, so or like maybe September, time, or maybe September. Yeah, so September yeah. in the fall, and I, I think that conversation informed me when I had further conversations with Mike and then the consultant, Chris Woodcock. So some of the analysis that the consultant is doing is addressing some of the matters you're talking about, trying to balance what his estimates would be for a meter replacement program, working uh, with Mike on unaccounted water and figuring out you know, wh where the different pockets of that might be and how it can be addressed, uh, as well as um, looking at quarterly billing and what sort of uh, you know, what his estimates would be in regards to some of the estimates you've put out. So I, th I think we, we are very much on the same page in terms of issues to address and potential action items for water sewer rates. I, I think Mike generally feels the same uh, way if you want to answer that. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. right. Since we've mentioned your names. Yes, I figured I would at least really stand, stand up. Uh, this is sir. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman and members of the board. Uh, uh, you know, I read the memo uh, presented, and as Adam explained, we are on the same page on many of these items. Um, it's one of our uh, biggest tasks here to get a, a wrangle on this unaccounted for water, and, and, and I don't think it's necessarily as bad as maybe some preliminary estimates were showing. Um, through our meter reading program that we put together, we've been able to... Uh, outfit a lot of municipal buildings with meters and are getting data from those locations that may account for some of that. Uh, we obviously think that maybe older meters may account for some, uh, but some preliminary studies show in our region where the water is so clean, MWA water is clean, the meters last longer than other parts of the country, so that's not necessarily where we're seeing a lot of water being unaccounted for. Uh, so I'm confident with the work we're doing with Chris Woodcock, we will answer some of the questions that Adam mentioned about uh, quarterly billing and the extra revenue we may, um, or the, you know, the, the better cash flow we'll get through a program like that. But in addition, we're looking for areas where we can find um, opportunities to, to wrangle in this unaccounted for water. Uh, we've implemented a, an annual leak detection study now. We were doing that biannually before. It's fairly short money and it gives us a picture of the whole town uh, where we may have leaks that are going unnoticed. So we're doing a better job on that front as well. Uh, a few topics uh, that were mentioned, uh, estimating water through hydrant flushing and water main breaks. These are things that we currently do take into account when we put together our statistical reports to figure out unaccounted for water. So the, the very good points were brought up by the memo. A lot of them we are currently addressing and a lot we are on the, on the, um, on the plate for evaluate. 
questions for Michael or Gordon or Adam? Hmm. Yes, Mr. Kira. Yeah, I just I just had one. Um, one thing that was raised was uh, water main replacements, and, and I think that uh, Mr. Rademacher, in your memo, you said that uh, one mile of water main uh, replacement is at a cost of uh, 850000 to a, a million dollars to replace a mile. Um, last week, the MWRA came, and they, they talked about their major project that they're going to be doing along um, you know, Brattle and, and Robbins and up to Park Circle and also over in the uh, Brunswick Road area. Yeah. And they mentioned that when, when they're replacing their mains, that they're going to have to do some relocation of ours, too. And, and I guess I missed it. Are we going to get some water main replacement on their dime as a result of that? And do you have a sense of how, yes. much, how much that will be? Uh, well, any, any work that they need to do to facilitate their water main installa uh, installation is going to be covered by them entirely. So they will pay the cost to relocate some water main. Um, relocation will include replacement. Correct. Re yeah. Replacement. They wouldn't use the same pipe. Yeah, it would yeah. be uh, uh, new materials. So there's going to be uh, a significant amount, um, about a, uh, I think it's about a half a mile of water main uh, replaced for the town in addition to the MWRA's. Uh, infrastructure. They have some sewer main they have to replace uh, in order to do their work and some uh, storm drain work. So we will get some new infrastructure out of that project. So we'll get about a half a million dollar value in water main replacement and then whatever the, the uh, wastewater. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Anybody else? No. Okay. Uh, Gordon, do you want to say something else? Um, well, obviously, we're quite um, pleased to hear all this, and uh, we just wanted to provide our our thoughts to the board. And uh, one last question: um, If I were to get up a town meeting and ask about this, would we have further information available? Maybe. My question was: If I were to get up a town meeting during during the water and sewer, would there be uh, more information available for us at that time, perhaps, or is that too early? Uh, no, I believe we are, our goal is to have this rate study completed before town meeting and have some recommendations at that time. And so that's where I was confused. You call it a rate study, but it seems like it's, it's so basically it's an overall usage and, and ways to control rate study. Is that, is that correct? Uh, well, what the rate study will, in, in, will make recommendations, <clears throat> excuse me, on whether or not it's cost effective to replace meters. Are we going to recoup that expense of doing so? Uh, you know, should we ramp up our meter main replacement because we would see less water main breaks and less water loss? So some of those things would be factored into the capital part of the rates. Uh, so the rates depend heavily on if we make a lot of investment in the system. Uh, and you have to weigh the cost benefit of doing that. And the quarterly will be part of the package? Yeah, yes, the qu quarterly time. billing. Okay. Yes. One time. Okay. Well, I look forward to hearing more. Thank you. Okay, Gordon, I just, uh, I, um, I am always impressed with the kind of homework you and your uh, fiscal resources task group do, so thank you for that. Thank, thank you, Kevin. In terms of town meeting, though, I would ask that you direct through our town manager yeah. uh, if you do need information or some, if there's oh, some I'll, specific. I'll, I know. <laughs> I'll be sure to broach I, the coach ahead of time and not call, cat hit, catch him unawares. I've learned, I've learned my, my uh, lesson no, in I those regards. Thank, thank you, thank Gordon. Um, Okay, so I, the, uh, the correspondence is before the Warren article hearings, Maureen, should I? So I would last to do that. Just because, because of that. Okay. Well, I see Mr. Radosha is here. He just absented you his letter. That's do you want to speak, Bob, to the letter? This is our, you, you sent us a letter about littering in Arlington. No, you don't have to, Bob. I'm just... Thank you. I didn't come to speak to it. I just oh, came right. for other things. But anyhow, as one point I'd like to um, add, just to enhance it a little bit. Should I explain what that was about? It would I be love. helpful. <laughs> yes. Okay. You have it. They I, don't. I, you know, don't okay. feel you have to speak. I just saw you there, so I'm giving no, okay, you the fine. opportunity. Basically, my letter was in regard to litter in terms of not having enough trash barrels around town. And uh, a little bit on graffiti, but that's another issue. But in terms of the trash barrel comment that I made, that we don't have, we only have one within the town grounds, right? That is from Mass Ave to Maple Street, 
academy to spangle away. There's only one trash barrel behind the uh, Whittemore Robins in the playground. Now that's six close to seven acres. Down at the Jefferson Cutter, which is about 12,000 square feet, there are four of them. There's one across the street, Uncle Sam, and a recycling, but only one on these grounds. So with the litter that's out back, I'm just asking to uh, see what the big deal is about not getting a few uh, trash bells put in. How's that? Adam. So uh, it's interesting, this was on tonight. Uh, there's a resident named Maya Gins who was in, uh, I think, two meetings ago, or maybe the last selectors meeting. Uh, this was a follow-up to that. That was a follow-up to that. Yes. I believe I invoked Mr. Redoshi. And you encouraged me to. <laughs> so I actually uh, spoke with her both last week and this morning, and she's coming in to meet with Mike Rademacher and myself. Two weeks from now, she's organized a group of citizens to uh, start tackling the littering issue. So why don't I put in a list of issues <clears throat> that Mike and I talk about uh, trash barrels and, yep. and be, you know, have an answer for you one way or the other. Uh, we'll no, my, my point is, out in the garden there, yeah. I mean, it, it's a disgrace what's going on. There isn't one out there. When I, when I come around here with my, my uh, grandson on a Friday, and I've got a sticky lollipop in my pocket and we come in here, I gotta go into the men's room to find a place to put it. So, um, if you can have four down there, I think we could have about three anyway around here, at library here and out back. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else here on correspondence that they sent us? Okay. Move to receipt. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Uh, a warrant article hearings, Article 15, bylaw amendment regulation of utility halls. Uh, Adam, do you wish to speak? Is this? Oh, okay. Oh, right, Mr. Leonard, excuse me. Good evening. And before you begin, congratulations, Kevin, on your award at camp. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the article that you have in front of you, first off, I do not take any credit for. The article, its entirety, was drafted over 13 years ago by the original Telecommunications Committee, consisting of fine men and women who presented it to the Board of Selectmen. And at that particular time, as the piece of paper hopefully you should have, states, the selectmen decided for a three to zero vote to have confidence in the utilities and what they were saying at that particular time, that there was a maintenance program that was either underway or was going to be underway in regards to the aesthetic work of the utility posts in the town of Arlington. I submit to you that even though almost 14 years has gone by and it's been 14 years of growth by these utilities in the town of Arlington, there has not been 14 years of maintenance on their products at the same time. Some of these utilities are not even in existence anymore. Some of the utilities that were mentioned, Bell Atlantic has been encompassed by Verizon, Boston Edison has been encompassed by Insta. Media One, the last time I checked, I think it was encompassed by AT&T or Comcast. And sadly, the Telecommunications Committee is no longer in existence either. Therefore, I am only suggesting that whatever was on the boards with these utilities at the time is probably falling through the cracks in regards to any kind of maintenance in the town of Arlington. A little history would be that as I, from what I've been able to find out so far in doing some research is that when a utility requires a pole in the town of Arlington, that utility has to turn around and pay a fee or a tax or something to have that pole exist so that they could use it. They pay that fee or tax or whatever it may be to the town of Arlington, and they in turn, if another utility comes along and wants to use their pole, 
they can then turn around and charge that utility to come off of their pole. Whether it's monthly or whether it's yearly, I haven't yet found out. I'm still doing more research on it. I submit to you that what this basically, this concept might be, would be that, in a word, the utilities are the owners of the telephone poles, utility poles, or whatever, and technically, they are the landlord of that pole. And in a concept I'd like the board to consider is that the other people that possibly use their pole could be considered tenants of the pole. And a concept I'd like the board to consider is that, as we know, with buildings in the town of Arlington, landlords are responsible for their tenants. And they don't want to have any problems coming from the town of complaints about their tenants. I submit that what has happened over 14 years is that the tenants have made their various connections to the poles in the town of Arlington, and they have not been any accountable as to maintain them. As I've gone many times walking up and down Mass Avenue, there's structures and things hanging on the poles right now that are serving no purpose whatsoever, such as wires hanging down, brackets that used to hold up terminals that aren't there anymore. Now it's even going a step further. Some, one person mentioned to me once when I first started this project, well, what poles are you talking about? I started to make a list and I thought it was, it's just totally ridiculous because it's, it's going to be about 20 pages long with all the poles. One of the poles that jumps out to me most of the time is right over there at the Sons of Italy, pole 770 over two. It's almost right outside the front door of the Sons of Italy. And 75% of the way up the pole is a telephone terminal, and a little further on up is an electrical terminal. And they've got more vines and branches and trees in and out of both of them than I've ever seen in my life. Another one is a pole right across from the Watertown Savings Bank on Mass Avenue. There's two cables that go from a pole on Mass Avenue and hit a pole on Mount Vernon Street. And both cables, as they leave the pole on Mass Avenue, are just sagging in the breeze. They're not connected at all. It doesn't make any sense. And lastly, I just noticed another one down here recently in the town of Arling in the Arlington Center across from Cave and Savings Bank. When I, I, did, I was in the business for about 41 years. We used to have what we call you guys, which used to be a you guy would be protecting the cable that would be going up the side of the pole. Well, unless it's been fixed recently, the u guard that's out here across from the bank in Arlington Center, half of it's going straight up and the other half of it is not even connected. It's a disgrace, total disgrace. Lately, what I've seen more and more is why is it now coming up out of the ground on the poles? Whether they be grounds for the electrical, grounds for telecom, I don't know. All I know is it is a temptation the kids going to school, walking down Mass Avenue, what does this wire do? Let me yank on it and see what happens. There's no protection whatsoever. As they say, whether it be a ground or whether it be electrical wire or whatever. The list just goes on and on and on. Conduits that come up the side of the pole that used to be for protection of the cables. For some reason, they can't seem to run cables into the same conduit. Maybe it's different companies. So they add another conduit until such time as you got three or four round conduits hanging off of a pole, and in some cases on Mass Avenue by string. They have pieces of string that's just wrapped around the pole holding it together. So one of the things I'm doing by bringing back this article, evidently 14 years ago, or almost 14 years ago, with the help of town council, the telecommunications committee, and other people involved, Somewhere along the line, it was decided we have to turn around and we have to give the Board of Selectmen the authority by changing the bylaw to at least get this process rolling, especially with the idea of aesthetic and cleaning it up and safety for the poles, utility poles in the town of Arlington. What I would like, basically, again, in repeating is to stress the fact that if people as property owners in the town of Arlington are so-called, let's say, held accountable 
in any manner, shape, or form to please keep your property up, why can't we do this to the utilities at the same time by basically saying, you have property in the town of Arlington, we're not trying to go after you, <clears throat> we're not trying to tax you, fee you, threaten you, we're just saying maintain your property, that's all. If we can do it as homeowners, why can't you do it as property owners in the town of Arlington also? Some other things I've come across recently, there was an article in the paper of December of last year. It kind of has something to do with it in an indirect way. There's an organization in Massachusetts that was going after an individual, I believe in Saugus or Lynn, because they were not keeping their property up. I believe the way the story went was the man was like a auto mechanic place. He repaired cars. And he was claiming that people were dumping stuff on his property, and he, he couldn't be claimed for it. I won't read the whole thing, but the paragraph, which is interesting, states, under state law, a property owner is responsible for cleaning up even if he or she did not own the property at the time of the release and had no role in it. I submit to you, utilities with their poles are property owners in the town of Arlington, why couldn't they be held accountable at the same time? And lastly, one of the things which recently caught my eye was that in regards to litter in the town of Arlington recently in the past couple of weeks, one of a wise man was once asked, what can be done about the litter in the town of Arlington? And that man asked, answered by saying, we're talking a lot of cleaning up what's there, but the real solution is not putting it there in the first place. People must take pride in their individual property and the town's property. That was you, Mr. Grayley. I recognize it. Thank you for saying it. <laughs> Did you say brilliant, Mr. Leonard? Is that? No. A wise man. <laughs> wise man. Well, At this time, uh, I would like Mr. Chaper to come up if he wants to add anything. Mr. Chaper is a town meeting member of Precinct 12, former chairman of the Telecommunications Committee. Could, could I just ask you a question, but do you want me to wait, Roly? Do you want to? Uh, I, Mr. Are you aware of uh, other communities that have taken this approach? Not to my knowledge. I have talked to a gentleman over the telephone, and he expressed to me, good luck. We've been doing this for 12 years here in Lexington, and the state's been stonewalling us. Yeah. I, I wonder whether, whether there might be other state guidelines that protect the utilities. Oh, sorry, Mr. Dunn. So yeah. was that specific in relation to electrical power, that conversation with the gentleman from Lexington? I believe his issue was to turn around and have something done with the situation of all the utility poles and the conditions that they're in in the town of Lexington. What can be done to clean it up, whether it be a double pole issue or whether it be to clean up the wires or whatever. The impression he got and he says he's been fighting it for 12 years and he'll continue to fight it, is that uh, this, he just gets stonewalled every time he turns around. I'm now, I, I, excuse me, for throw, I did not approach him <clears throat> with this because I didn't find this until later, and I did not approach him with the idea that I'm not going with the double pulse. What I'm basically saying is if you want to really break it down is good housekeeping and good neighborhood and safe neighborhood. And as I say, all you have to do is just walk up and down Mass Avenue. I had even got the Summer Street and the side streets. It's deplorable. It's absolutely deplorable. You can't, it seems more, uh, me, the more the issue has been, and I saw this myself in the various phone companies, get it in, we make money on the in. We don't make money on taking it out. We'll come back later. And later is now almost 14 years. Um, I'll pass. Okay, Mr. Byrne. Um, I actually have a question for town council. Now, if, say, this warrant article does go through town meeting, would, I mean, we just uh, would, is, would we essentially be asked to call the utility companies and just say, can you come clean this? And would we have any jurisdiction to them actually coming and acting on those phone calls? Well, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Vernon, it depends uh, kind of in what form it goes mm -hmm. through, and the article in its current form is uh, not, not very specific as to whether certain standards of conduct would be implemented in the bylaws themselves 
or whether uh, the bylaws would be amended to allow the Board of Selectmen to promulgate regulations, which the Board of Selectmen would then do, and how those regulations would be enforceable would be part of the bylaw change that would have to happen. So um, if uh, the bylaws were amended by town meeting, if that um, amendment was approved by the Attorney General, which depending on the area may or may not occur, because in some areas, um, local regulation of utility poles is preempted by state law. There have been court cases to that effect. So, um, but if the bylaws were amended and that amendment was approved and there was an enforcement mechanism in place, it could be um, like enforcement of any other bylaw where tickets would be issued and um, those tickets you know, could be challenged, but um, that's something that could be done either um, by the police or through implementation of regulations, depending on what form it took. Okay, thank you. No, my, and there's a number of other speakers first. Mr. Chaput. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Roly Chaput, town manager. When Johnny Leonard called me a couple of weeks ago, I really had to think about when did we do this? I'd forgotten, it was way back in 1999. I think, Kevin, you're the only one around at the time. It didn't go through, but unfortunately, there was some action that occurred after the fact. One of your predecessors, uh, Jack Hurd, had a group that put the pressure on both uh, the utilities to get going, and primarily the issue at that time was to clean up a lot of the double poles. I think, if I recall, they were supposed to present back either to you or to the town manager a report on a periodic basis how well they were doing. They have reported to us once, but sorry, go ahead, yeah. Once? I, I okay, so. I, don't, I don't know. Oh, just once? It was, I think it was, if I'm remembering right, on the double pole issue. I believe that's correct. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Robert. Okay, Chief. well, it, obviously it would have been nice if we had known even semi-annually how well they were right. doing. I, I, I think, I guess, I guess why I'm here is to back up John, of course, but to emphasize that there is an issue here, and, and he's talking about aesthetics, and that's a good point. It was in the original legislation, but quite honestly, I was much more concerned about this whole business of double poles and safety. So now if they've cleaned up a lot of that, there's no reason that they can't take the action that John is talking about, and, and from an aesthetic standpoint, quality of life in the town, yes, I think it's necessary. So I would hope that you can put something together here to present the town meeting that really makes some sense. It would be beneficial. Thank you. Uh, a couple of years ago, I, I looked into this. I live across the street from a, uh, a pole that has a big X on it indicating it's condemned. And it, it feeds, it goes to the pole next to my house, which is bent way over. Uh, the span of wires is too long and and from that pole, you know, is where I get my electricity. It's just a matter of time before things go down. So I looked into the state law, and the state law requires sort of timely re replacement of double poles, but there's no penalty for not performing this, and that's the, the issue. In last, the last legislative session, which is two years, I, I counted at least three bills on, on the double pole issue. And apparently they all died in committee. So um, I, I'm curious what sort of penalty you're envisioning to, to get compliance and enforcement. Is it to require um, approval of a new permit based on satisfaction of um, uh, complaints against um, you know, various polls in town or what's the proposed enforcement mechanism? Um, so, did you want to respond to that, John, or something? Else? No, ba basically, I, I will still go w with the aesthetic point of view right now. The double poles are an issue, there's no question about that. But when this article was brought up back in 99, uh, the wording is what attracted me once I, once I rediscovered it. You could have a situation and I'll just be right up front with it. You could have a situation where you could possibly clear some of the aesthetic problems by eliminating the double pole at the same time. I mean, 
as I say, I'm not, I'm not trying to brag, but I've seen a lot in the 41 years. My personal opinion right now is that one of the ways that they're eliminating the double poll issue is in trying to satisfy the general public is by turning around and getting rid of 75% of the old poll and leaving 25% of it up top. That way, if John Q. Public comes up, the double poll is gone. I guess my gripe is gone. I have nothing to complain about as long as I don't look up. Then what happens is whenever we get to the rest of it with the other tenants, as I call them, that's fine. But we've kept this individual quiet by getting rid of the double poll. Some of the other things which may come up, just lightly, things that might be brought up would be like, well, how can we, how can we deal with this? We've got about five or six people on the poll, five or six different tenants. Again, I bring back the idea, you're the landlord, you take care of your tenants. Uh, where do we get the people to do the work? Well, supposedly the economy is improving, veterans are coming back, why don't we hire a vet? You know, put them to work, give them a job when they come back. And, oh, well, gee, this might have to turn around and be passed on to the consumer. It might be a cost. Well, excuse me, but not right now, but in the past, I owned property in the town of Arlington. Whenever I fixed up my property, nobody did anything for me. I didn't get any rebates or anything. As a property owner, I just wanted to do it. As a property owner, and as Mr. Chapin said, as a good neighbor in the town of Arlington, why don't you maintain your property? And we, all, we can all be happy. And lastly, I could think of nothing better than to basically see a headline either in the Arlington Advocate or the Boston Globe, NSTAR takes the lead with Arlington to clean up uh, Verizon to join forces with Arlington to remove excess waste. You have possibly like about five or six different utilities, and maybe I'm dreaming a little bit, but I think the first one was on board the other people are going to turn around and say, I want a piece of that. Because if nothing else, I don't even have to hire a public relations firm. They're doing it for me. And if I'm out there doing it, somebody's going to buy my product just because I'm turning around and getting rid of waste. Mm. It's free publicity. Right. OK. Um, um, very uh, complicated issue. I mean, in some ways, we need the utilities as much as they need us. Uh, but a Adam, do you want to, did you want to comment on this? Or Mr. Rademacher, do you want to? Yeah. Uh, but I'd like to ask a question as well, if I may. What, it, uh, Mark's point, let's say right now we do, we have an issue with the poll that's falling. What process would we follow? We'd call the utility directly. Um, th there's just one utility in charge of polls, correct? Even though there's yeah. multiple tenants on it. Sorry, go ahead, so. Well, what I was going to add was that I think Mr. <laughs> Leonard uh, and Mr. Chaplin and Mr. Kevin, they've raised, they've raised a very important issue in town in terms of multiple utilities and, or the main utility on the pole not maintaining the asset that's in town. Uh, but from uh, what town council has said and what uh, uh, Mike Rodemacher, Director of Public Works has said, I fear that we can't effectively as a community put a bylaw in place to really get something done in this regard. Um, uh, based on state preemption of regulation of polls, as well as the fact that if we put uh, a penalty in place, I think we'd have to take a closer look at how enforceable a financial penalty would be and whether or not um, the utility would really even have to pay attention to it and, and, and pay that penalty. I, I can't help but wonder if we wouldn't be better served by uh, working with Mr. Leonard uh, in our legislative delegation and probably, uh, or possibly, excuse me, even uh, broadening that to the region uh, if our neighbors are dealing with the same issues and, and working with a, a broader legislative delegation and see if there is legitimate state action that could be taken to address this issue uh, in a more broad-based fashion. So I, think, I think it's a systems problem. The, the problem, as Mr. Leonard accurately said, is they, they have some financial incentive to get wires up there, but they're not incentivized financially to clean things up when they're no, uh, no longer in service. So that speaks to the system. So if there's a means of adjusting that system regionally or statewide, I think that could be a much more effective tool. Okay, town council. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to pick up on a point that uh, the town manager made, <coughs> and um, I don't know if I had made this uh, point to the board, but uh, a few years ago, the town of Bedford did, in an effort to address the double poll problem there, uh, promulgate 
an enforceable bylaw with penalties through ticketing to um, put in the penalty that Mr. Kepline rightly points out is missing from the state law requiring the removal of double poles within a certain period of time. Um, and um, the result, uh, rather than um, kind of the utilities stepping up to address the problem, was the utilities, uh, Boston Edison at the time, uh, took the town of Bedford to court, um, to the Supreme Judicial Court, and won that case. So um, that is, at least historically, been the um, unfortunate result of local efforts to try to regulate these issues. If, if I may just bring up a point. Again, even though it, it is an issue, I'm trying to stay away from the double pole issue. Because if you concentrate on the double pole issue, you never get the aesthetics done in the town. To me, you can get the aesthetics done in the town without attacking the double pole issue right now. Mr. Dunn. Oh, Mr. Carroll, sorry. Yeah, I was, uh, oh, sorry. He was sorry. way ahead of me. <laughs> sorry about that, truly. Um, I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit here, and I hate doing this with the, the, the manager and the council, but um, as I read what's, what's before us right now, what we're being asked, what's being asked of town meeting is simply to give us the authority, to give us the authority. There's nothing, you know, specifically prescriptive that, that's, that's laid out here. From my yet, perspective, yet, Joe, yet, yet, Joe, yet, sorry, go ahead. yet, from my, my perspective looking at this, it's kind of an, an opening for, uh, and it gives us the opportunity to further look at the issue and if we are able to identify a workable way to approach this, we could act if we have the authority. If we don't have the authority, we have no ability to, to, to act. I mean, it feels like there's, there's, there's kind of a theme here tonight in the last couple of weeks. I mean, trying to improve the aesthetics in our town, litter, maintenance of the poles, make sure they're, they're uh, looking well, um, especially as we're trying to make, make the town an attractive place for people to visit, spend money. I, I think it, it's, it is important that we, we keep, keep these uh, on the table. So. Personally, my, myself, I'm inclined to, to support the language as, as it is here, if it pa or, or something al along this line that gives us the authority to, to, um, to um, look at the issue further and potentially regulate this. I don't, I don't see anything here that, that's directing us to, to, uh, to draft those regulations until we have the information we need. Okay, Mr. Dunn. So, uh, I'm going to come back to something you just said, but I'm just I'm going to okay. add a little bit first. So, uh, I was actually started. I, I moved into town right around 1998-99. I forget exactly which year, and that was. And so I moved to this new town, and I started showing up at Slackman's meetings. So I actually remember some of the stuff that was going on around with the double poles. The first committee that I got appointed to in town was the uh, municipal power committee, which was looking at whether or not the town should buy the, all the poles and wires and everything from the electrical power. So I can honestly say that I've studied this one, not recently, but definitely, definitely in the past. And I can, and I, I feel like the conclusion that was made back then was we don't have the direct legal, legal lever that we need to fix this problem, but we do have some legal authority. And the answer, and one of the things we have is every time they come to us, for a permit is we, you know, we, we, we slow play the permit, we argue with them, we tell them we're not going to fix this until you talk about this. And we definitely got their attention. I can even remember one particular meeting where a guy was complaining, a resident was complaining about a pole on Mystic Street that was bent over that wasn't right. And uh, the, the, the gentleman from the utility said, I will have someone in front of your house at 8.15 tomorrow morning waiting for you. Please come out and talk to him. And, I, and the, I lived on Stokecroft Road at the time. So I came out and looked and the next day. And yes, indeed, there really was the, you know, the, guy, the guy there. So that was, but I think that there is, and so I feel like the conclusion that was reached then was there's a tension here. We don't have the right levers. And so the only lever we have is to just you know, pull on this rope for a while and pull them in our direction a little bit and then using using that and so to me my fallback position if we can't do what Mr. Leonard is asking us for is we can definitely step that back up again and hold the utilities to the fire more when they come to us for the things that they need so going back to the very specifics about what you just said Joe and so there's nothing in this language that's objectionable but let's just say hypothetically we vote and we say yeah tonight we say yes we support 
inserting this article in this language, yep. um, and we say, respect the town council, please write us an actual motion that we can vote on. Because we can't vote, remember, the difference, the difference yeah. between, and actually not for you, but necessarily, but for everybody else. When you talk about the warrant, the warrant is like an agenda item. You can put on the warrant um, you know, almost anything you want that says this is what we're going to actually talk about. When you get to town meeting, you actually have to vote the actual motion. So if we support this, then we're asking the town council to come back to us with actual language. Right. And at the moment, I'm struggling at what that actual language would be because we could say, dear town council, please create a new bylaw section. Dear town council, please like even like you know request um, a, a home rule petition to modify the town manager act that says Arlington has permission to control its polls as opposed to the other towns. You're like I haven't I can't come up with and it's something that we could ask her to do that she could actually deliver back to us. Especially hearing the example about Bedford, like you know, and I understand, Mr. Leonard, that Bedford was focused on double polls, and I understand that you want us to be focused on aesthetics, but the link between the double polls and the aesthetics is they're both regulations. And I don't think that we as a town have the right to regulate these polls as much as we'd like to. I mean, I would, trust me, I would dearly like to, but I don't think, I, I don't think we have the right, and I think anything we pass a town meeting is immediately going to get shut down. And so, if, so well, I'm going to finish. And so if we can't do what we'd like to do, which is control the polls, the next thing we can do is try to get what we, we want, which is better safety and better aesthetics. And I think we have some tools to those things. But I think that the tool being recommended here, I don't see us having the legal right to do that. Well, that, that's why I brought up the concept of the idea of, of property owners, meaning in a sense that they are property owners in the town of Ireland. I agree that they are property owners, but those pro that property ownership rights is very explicitly set in state law. Mm -hmm. And that it's related to the power generation and it's related to all that stuff. Utility poles aren't like every other piece of property in town. They have their own class of law. Let, let's hold on a second. Okay, no, Mr. That's, I, Dan covered what I was. Oh, Dan covered it, okay. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe there's anything we could write that would be approved by the Attorney General. But I'm kind of leaning towards still writing something anyhow okay. uh, to put a stake in the ground <laughs> saying, but you know, well, right, to put, because as you say, I would dearly love to have the kind of authority Mr. Uh, Shaput and Mr. Leonard are talking about here. Uh, uh, and at least we, we regenerate the um, the conversation and say, you know, Arlington's pretty serious uh, about the aesthetics of these polls and that they, you know, so I, 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 I kind of want to, I don't know, I would support taking a shot at writing something up here, uh, but, but I think when we do, it would have to include what penalties we would enforce, right? Wouldn't it? But again, I, I'm, I'll bet you anything, mm -hmm. the Attorney General says no, but We've had the discussions, the utility companies perhaps have heard about, have heard about it, and we follow some of the other uh, uh, tactics as you've recommended, Dan, that have been used in the past. Uh, so I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm just thinking that why not? Let, let's at least talk about it and tell them we're, we're thinking about it. Sorry, town council didn't oh. see. She, uh, she wants to tell no. me I'm wrong. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. I just want to, a point of clarification only. Right. Um, and we'll wait, of course, to see what the full board votes, but I'm assuming that if the board votes to go that direction, uh, what you would want is not something with the specific standards set out in the bylaw, because right. I, I don't have that here. What you would want would be something along the lines of what Mr. Curo was saying, uh, a general authority to the Board of Selectmen to regulate some teeth with that authority, some enforcement, but that the particular standards or time standards or anything else would happen through a regulatory proceeding before the board? Hmm. Right. That is what I meant. Hmm. I would move that. Isn't it? Yes, I, and I would, I would move to request that okay. the council prepare language to that effect. Sorry, um, no, I, I just think that it's a slippery slope when we start looking into unenforceable, unenforceable warrant articles. And, um, you know, that's been a big issue with some other ones that have come across um, town meeting in the past. And I think that is something we should you know, really consider before taking a vote on this is how it, how we will be able to enforce this, and the best practice on how to move forward. I think that Dan, you know, had some pretty good ideas there about what happened in the past, and I um, I wouldn't be comfortable 
supporting that. So where do you work during the day? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, and and I think as a practice, I agree with you. I'm just saying in this case. Sorry, Mr. Dunn. No, um, so uh, one of the things that um, so I, I, I definitely appreciate what you're talking about with trying to you know say like do, do this. Uh, the telecommunications committee, I think, was one of the ways that we held the feet to the fire, and I think that the power municipalization committee was another one. Because when you're saying that, the, you know, say that we're serious about those things, right. um, the, those that was I know the power municipalization committee really got their attention because we were, you know, I mean, it definitely worked. And so maybe um, rather than try to do the bylaw, maybe creating another committee to beat the drum again yeah. for a while might yeah, be the way. way. And if the drum beating doesn't get you where you want to, it builds the case that you need for the bigger picture that you're talking about. So. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dan, you're exactly right. We got some action because the utility companies knew that we were very concerned about this. And so if new legislation is written regardless of how it's written, there's got to be something in there that says they have to come back and report to us on a periodic mm -hmm. basis. They have got to keep their feet on the fire. I think that's really key here. You're probably right that it'll be very difficult to write some legislation that would pass muster. But even if they find out or get word that we're serious about this, it should be able to create some action. I'm liking it. So, Mr. Kira. I'm fine with that. I, I like I like that. I, I think that the, the one hesitation I have is I don't think I've heard that we know for a fact that it's unenforceable. We know that it's been that, that something similar was struck down in Bedford. And I, I'm just so hesitant to close out the ability to act if we were able to identify why something was, was shot down in Bedford and, and, and if we as a board were able to, to draft regulations that, that would address those concerns of the state. But how about the committee as a first step? I, I'm, fine with, I'm fine with that. That, yeah, that explores that. this issue as well as others. <laughs> no, we just no? <laughs> I'm an old guy. You can mumble to me. <laughs> well, uh, maybe, maybe if the committee's formed and then, you know, looks into potential language for maybe next year's town meeting or, you know, moving forward after a little more, you know, st work is done on it. Mr. Lane. I, I would suggest that the best, the best committee to handle this would be the Board of Selectmen. Hmm. Uh, I keep emphasizing the fact we've lost 13 years since anything like this was brought up before, uh, since, since anything was brought up the first time. I think maybe the word that we're looking for is guidelines. Uh, some of the committees that have been involved in Arlington, that seems to strike the note that if you come up with guidelines, guidelines that maybe the utilities would have to acknowledge, pay attention to, or whatever, that would be enforced by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, if you turn around and you make another committee now, with all respect to the great work that the men and women of the Telecommunications Committee did, you're talking about losing almost like another year before it's brought up to the next town meeting. And it, just, it goes on and on and on. One thing, as I keep emphasizing over and over again, that's got me worried, is like I say, the why is that are now coming up out of the street. No longer is everything up above. It's a, why is that it coming up out of the concrete, out of the dirt in the pole, not protected by anything? I'm reminded, I was reminded the other day when I was thinking about it, who would have thought maybe a couple of years ago you would read that animals in downtown Boston being walked by their, by their owners were being electrocuted or zapped by walking on grates that all of a sudden utilities discovered they had a problem. Those are animals, fine. I mean, I'm, just, I, I'm, not, I'm not in favor of that naturally, and it's too bad such a situation happened, but as I say, all you gotta do is walk up and down Mass Avenue and say, here to Jimmy's, and you probably got about 13 poles if the wires are unprotected and coming up out of the ground. There's nothing for a child to possibly grab, touch, et cetera. Yeah. It's waiting for something to happen. Y yes, uh, 
Who was first? I don't know. No, no, that definitely got me. <laughs> I, I agree, Mr. Leonard, that a committee can slow things down. I also thank you. I, I think you, you might be you know, putting us in a very high regard that we'll work any faster than any other committee in this regard because we're, we are, by definition, we're a generalist board. I mean, we work on a lot of different issues at once, and I think that having specialized advice, dedicated advice, is useful. I would say, though, that I would still feel more comfortable if we drafted a proposed vote to town meeting, if this is within the scope of the article, I don't even know if it is, that would create the committee that, that, that's proposed and that would still go forward and give us authority to promulgate regulations um, based on the advice that we are given by that committee. Mr. Dunn. Um. Juliana, I've got a question for you. Yes. Uh, so the current, the, the warrant that's out there has an article about committees, excuse me, committees? I mean like the reports and committees. Yes. Does that warrant article include the ability to create new ones or is it only, it, li it lists the one? So we would have to have a different article to create a specific committee. Correct. Okay. Uh, correct. I mean, you I tried to figure it out how to fit it under this language and I couldn't figure out how to do it. Right, there, there, so there's two possible ways. One is the moderator could rule, um, and that's his ruling, yeah. certainly not mine, that the creation of a committee is within the scope of this article. Yeah. I'm not sure how we'd rule on that. The other is that the board uh, could receive this authority through, under the bylaw created by town meeting, if, if approved by the attorney general, and the board could uh, create a committee to assist it yeah. without a vote of town meeting. Okay. My thought, Mr. Leonard, listening to you talk about the polls on Mass Ave, is that that committee isn't going to make those polls solved by its, like no committee nor bylaw is going to make those polls be solved all by itself. In the end, they have to be get reported by somebody and like whether we hire someone to go out and check the polls, but in this case, it sounds like you're doing it yourself. I invite you to take a picture of it with your cell phone and send it to the town website where it will get processed and filed into, the, into our ticket system. And that's the type of data that I would use to talk to and hold the fire to the utilities. Because I can't talk to them about the polls because, I mean, I'll go for a walk myself, but at the same time, I invite you to, like, that data that you've got in your head has to flow into the town for us to react to it. Does that make sense? Yeah, the only problem with that is I don't have a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I ask you to write down the poll number, like 770-2, instead of the in front of the Sons of Italy, and uh, pass that one along. Yeah, the only thing I'm afraid of that, Mr. Dunn, is that uh, I have no problem with doing that. I mean, I could probably, I'm, I'm going to say I'm retired now, so I could probably go for a walk. People have told me to go for a walk for years. <laughs> but but uh, I think it has just been a trend that has taken over. As I say, I cannot say it's one particular utility. I, I, want, I guess I, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to start with your top ten and see what we can do. All right. I, Independent of all this, I'd like to see what we can do. Yeah. I bet Mr. Radosha would go for a walk with you because he, he was very good at <laughs> putting a whole bunch of pictures together for us tonight and right. <laughs> document. Okay. Uh, we've, we've explored this, um, um, I think, we haven't solved it, but, no. but I mean, we clearly know there's a lot of issues. Um, I need a, a motion from uh, a member of the board, um, but before, or Joe, did you actually make a motion? I did have a motion. It wasn't seconded, though. Okay. So, therefore, what would the board think of my appointing Mr. Dunn and Mr. Kiro uh, as a subcommittee of this board? Uh, to uh, take this issue, uh, meet with town council if necessary, Mr. Leonard. Uh, and I, I understand it's not putting it before town meeting necessarily this year, but to come back to us with a recommendation of a formation of some form of committee or uh, keeping it among the board itself, or uh, do you think that's a way to go at this point? I mean, we all, we all like this idea, but I, I, I don't care how we word it. I really don't believe the AG is going to, because of, um, you know, state preemption with their uh, statutes and bylaws that, you know. So, 
Or not bylaws, but anyhow, you know what I mean. I'm not sure I, uh, I'm, let me see if I can read your mind or understand some of the other things okay. you said. So one of the things that you said is that you want <laughs> us to leave it open for us to pursue something in a bylaw if we can. Uh, no, in regulations if we can. In regulations. That's why I like, the, I like the spirit of, of, of the warrant articles that's put forward because it, it actually but, just, just grants us authority Right. Within the parameters of state, but the, and federal we all love that spirit. But we, yeah. But no matter, so no matter, no matter what, we as a board, we have to recommend either no action or a specific motion. And you and I can recommend that motion uh, on that. Type oh, of oh, oh, that's you're you're saying for short term to re, right. to report back. Yes. Oh, gotcha. Yes. Okay. Feel great. Yeah, that's fine. All that's right. Fine. Yeah. You're willing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So move. Okay, so so move. Second. 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 So you understand what we're doing? They're gonna they're gonna try and come back to us with something that we can then therefore hopefully put into a warrant article before town meeting. Makes sense. Okay, we like everybody here thinks this is a good idea, but it's how how we do it. Okay, so uh, all those in favor, please signify. Right, moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Uh, yes. Yes. For housekeeping, uh, did the chair want to put in a date for the subcommittee to report back? Yes, I did. And your recommendation on that would be the May, March 11th? I mean, that's the next meeting. That's fine with me. I, yeah. I don't know. We need your, I mean, I think the, by definition you're going to be at one of these meetings. So, sure. No, yeah. that's fine. We, but we can do it by then? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we'll keep you in the loop, Mr. Leonard, okay? Thank you. All right. We're all in. Thank you. Okay. So, Article 16. That was quick. <laughs> uh, Adam, Ms. Oster. Or Oster, I should Oster, say. Yes. Oster, yes. Thank you, Mr. Adam. Chairman. Yeah. Adam Oster. Uh, the uh, proposed bylaw would set uh, pedestrian safety as a general criteria for street design. Uh, it's not retroactive. It has nothing to do with traffic enforcement. Uh, it sets a general goal and leaves the implementation to the professional staff. Um, because this sets a goal that has to do with the performance of the town's you know, professional duties, and you are the political leadership of the executive department, uh, you might be wondering, why do we have to do it this way? Why does town meeting have to get in on this? And um, uh, I think that's a, an important question. Uh, and I would start by, first of all, by saying if this were a proposal um, to specify a particular outcome, which it isn't, you should reject it, uh, a proposal like that. Uh, for instance, a proposal that there would be bicycle lanes on every street, a proposal that there would be four lanes on certain streets. Uh, that's the kind of thing that doesn't belong in a bylaw. That's the kind of thing that ought to be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, uh, it, but in that respect, this bylaw is modeled after uh, Chapter 90C. It's the state law that establishes the general requirement that there be accommodation for pedestrians and also for bicycles in street design. The way that worked was it's a very short law. There's a copy of it in your packet. It's not important, but I included it if you're interested. It sets the standard. And then Mass Highway went out and promulgated many regulations and design specifications that some of you might be familiar with uh, from the Mass Ave project. Um, the principle of pedestrian safety ought to be uh, in a bylaw to consolidate lessons that we've learned from other highway projects uh, and to spare us from having to repeat certain discussions every single time. Um, only a bylaw can express the settled policy of the town. Forgive me for saying this. Uh, selectmen can come and go. Town managers can come and go. Uh, only a bylaw uh, exists independently of them. Ow. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, I'd say also that to the extent that future projects, and this is only about future projects, face st state and federal scrutiny, it would be useful for the town to be able to refer to a policy statement like this to support the designs that it comes up with. Uh, recently, we've seen three years of dragged out conflict over street design, more than three years actually, including two attempts 
a town meeting to defund repair of sidewalks in my neighborhood. Um, it's clear uh, that street design is going to be a bone of contention going forward. I learned last year that street design is actually the subject of a national campaign by Tea Party groups. Um, please don't laugh, but apparently bicycle lanes are the new United Nations black helicopters. And I attach to your packet, and again, you don't have to read this, but it's weird stuff, New York Times article from last year about this trend. I would, would like to read just the first couple of sentences. Across the country, activists with ties to the Tea Party are railing against all sorts of local and state efforts to control sprawl and conserve energy. They brand government action for things like expanding public transportation routes and preserving open space as part of a United Nations-led conspiracy. I'm not making this up. So, you know, Arlington, we argue about things a lot. We're going to argue about a lot of things having to do with street design. We're always going to have new projects in the hopper. Uh, let's remove pedestrian safety from the line of fire and in the process simplify the process just a little bit. Um, if in the future street design issues come up that affect safety, I want the town to be able to say this is settled policy and not waste time or energy over it. And we have wasted some time or energy over it. I'm just going to refer briefly uh, to some stuff from Mass Ave, although this does not affect the Mass Ave project because that's, those decisions have been made. Um, last year, at the request of a business owner, um, the town, with the very best of intentions, made a minor change to the plan. They moved a bus stop. And it turned into sort of a jigsaw puzzle. And a lot of things had to be moved. And when the dust settled, the design for that area, which is down near Milton Street and Marathon Street, had been profoundly changed and not for the better in terms of pedestrian safety. Um, there was a safety island removed. There was a crosswalk removed from the business district. So instead of having three crosswalks, there were only two. Uh, there were a number of other changes. Um, and this made it into the 75% design. Um, and I mean, the good news is the town fixed it. The town held a public meeting about it. People spoke up about it. The town listened as it has done, you know, throughout this, this process. Uh, and my understanding is, although the drawings for the 100% plans are not available is that it was essentially restored to the way that it was before with, with some other changes that didn't really relate to that. But my point is, I mean, I'm not complaining about people wanting to do good things for businesses. I'm not really complaining about anything. But this took time. This took money. Uh, it, it was uh, about a year. The whole thing took a year. Um, and uh, uh, it, it, it should never have gone as far as it did. It shouldn't have gotten into the 75% design. Um, we shouldn't have spent a lot of time making drawings for it. We should have figured it out sooner. Um, and it would have been better, in this case, if they had this bylaw been in effect. Only a bylaw uh, can express the settled policy of the town. And no other local act speaks with that authority. I don't know if you've had time to look at what I wrote, I could walk you through it if that would be helpful. I'm seeing ye yeses for that. Briefly. Yeah. I, we, we get it all just, you know, we get it um, on Friday. We got the draft, like, so we've got your draft document there. Okay, I should explain that um, there's a revision that I think you have too that has three, three new words added to it. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but. I'll tell you where the words are, and if you don't see them, then you can <coughs> write them in. Uh, but in the, in the proposed motion, the enabling clause establishes that the bylaw will not, will, will not apply retroactively. Section 1 just establishes that pedestrian safety should be the top priority of the town within the scope of the project and within the scope of state and federal requirements. And all those withins mean that the bylaw cannot require the town to expand the scope of the project or require a more expensive design. It's not some backdoor thing that says, oh, okay, now we have to have, you know, bigger sidewalks everywhere and we have to have some expensive amenity for pedestrians. Um, 
the changes that I put in after talking to TAC emphasize that even further. There are three words, excuse me, where it talks about the focus. The three words are programmatic and fiscal scope, programmatic and fiscal before scope of the design in section one. And that's just to make really, really clear that uh, it's not a requirement um, for sidewalks. You wouldn't be in a situation where instead of refurbishing a street in front of a school, you were compelled to close the street down and discontinue a public way in order to protect the children. It doesn't go that far. It's about, it's not a, it's about allocating the decisions that are within these frameworks. And some of those decisions are going to be pretty small, but sometimes they're meaningful. Um, Article two is just a definition of, of pedestrian safety. I tried to be as specific as possible so that it's not a catch-all phrase. Um, the third section is, uh, excuse me, it preserves the current role of police and fire chiefs in the process, which I remember from Mass Ave that they were able to weigh in. I want them to continue to be able to do that in exactly the same way. Uh, and section four is a modest reporting requirement, which I think is important to keep the bylaw present uh, and paid attention to. Uh, it needn't be particularly detailed. So I guess in, in conclusion, what I'd say about it, um, the community uh, through public participation, but also through town meeting, has a legitimate role in setting goals and priorities that the professional staff of the town implement. It needs to be done in the right way. Uh, the much better, I think this is the right way, uh, as opposed to, for example, uh, the idea of putting complicated technical questions before voters in the form of ballot questions. Um, I appreciate from watching this process that adding the public to technical issues makes things harder to do. But I also think that it makes things better. And our staff does its best work when informed by that public participation. Arlington, I would say, is gripped generally by this whole question of how do we marry its democratic traditions to the technical demands of 21st century life and 21st century local government. Uh, and this bylaw is a small answer to that and I hope that you'll support it. And um, if there are, you know, related sort of technical issues, I'd certainly like to work on them to make it work. Uh, my first reaction, and I support you 100%, my first reaction is how can pedestrian safety not be part of all street design projects already? I mean, how intuitively it doesn't, you know, but I understand this is, this is to clarify and set in concrete. The only thing I'm a little uncomfortable with is, is for that the requirement that this needs a special report uh, at the end of a year, you know, either in, in, the, uh, in the annual report or at town meeting by the town manager. It's, it's uh, you know, it's somewhat akin to uh, we have to report on how well we did on, uh, on well, on every other issue that, that is related to projects in the town of Arlington. Do you know what I mean? So I just, I'm not sure I see the necessity of that requirement, but uh, I mean, I do. I favor this, but I'm, I'm, what do my colleagues think? Yeah, Dan. I guess, um, so I'll say that I'm, I have a hesitation about some of the language in section one, which is, uh, shall incorporate the greatest pedestrian safety that is feasible. It's stronger than I'd like, because I like, because I think that uh, all of this is a process of, of compromise of competing needs. And uh, I don't, and, and I com agree with Mr. Greeley that Pedestrian safety is absolutely one of the big ones. Yeah. It's not, if a, you know, if you, what a, a literal reading of that language could draw you to make some pretty extreme decisions about roads that I'm not quite ready to endorse. Um, and I, let me go back to a specific example. So the example that you talked about, where 
you know, they moved the bus stop and then they moved this and then they moved that and so on and so forth. Um, you think that this language would keep that from happening? I think that, uh, I think it would have helped the town to recognize earlier that this was not a go. Hmm. Uh, I think that um, uh, particularly with uh, a reporting requirement that involved the town manager that uh, the staff would have been in a position to say, look, uh, uh, business, we'd like to do whatever we can for you, but this is just, we, we've, we, and, we, and we thought we could do it, but this, is, this just can't be done. And I think that's, in fact, what they did say, mm -hmm. uh, what I imagine that they said ultimately, but I think they would have said it sooner. Mm -hmm. the, I guess that's the part of the, my the problem is, or uh, as much as I agree with the sentiment of what you're after, I don't necessarily agree with that example, because to me that example is a system, an example of the system working. Could it have worked more efficiently, could it have been faster, could it have gotten, you know, whatever. You know, making, making these designs is a messy, complicated process, and the fact that we had a detour down one of it, to me, is like, it's the cost of doing business. Well, I guess I just mentioned one thing in relation to that, which is that at the first meeting about the Mass Ave project, which was in 2008, um, people were talking about breaking ground in 2010. And now it's 2013, and we've just had another bump back by three months um, for, for advertising and presumably for, for when work begins. Uh, I don't think that's because of this incident that we talked about, but uh, it, we might have been able to move faster, a little faster. Well, other members of the board wish to speak on this? Wait one second. Go ahead, Mr. Carroll. Yeah, uh, th thank you very much. Um, I I like this as well. I mean, I think a lot of times bylaws are um, I don't want to use the word prescriptive twice in one night, but I'll, I'll use the word word again. And and in the worst case, they they tend over towards micromanaging, but that's not what this this does. There are other cases where I think it is appropriate to be more aspirational, and and to to to, to uh, use a bylaw. As a, as a clear statement of community values. And, and I think that this, this is important. This, this is important given some of the trends that we've seen. Um, it's important to keep that before us. I actually do like having some kind of a reporting requirement, not necessarily to, to town meeting, but maybe a paragraph or two in the, in the, in the annual report. Uh, presumably, I mean, I know that in the annual report, every, I don't, and the town manager, I'd invite him to chime in on this, but in the annual report every year, we report anyway on, on the projects that have gone on throughout the year around road design. So if we can just keep that in mind to, to highlight the, the, the safety, which I'm sure we do anyway. But. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, but not a report specifically on. No, no. And I don't think that's what, I don't think that's what's asked for. Here. I don't believe Sorry, that's what's yeah. asked for. Just to that point, uh, certainly not opposed to reporting on this as part of the annual town report, but I, I think this would be unique in the bylaws specifying one departmental function that would have to be reported on each year in the town report. So I, I think it would be setting a, a new precedent for dictating exactly what would be included in the town report. But I'm not necessarily comfortable with. With that said, I'm, I'm not opposed to reporting on it, but I'm not sure <coughs> setting that standard in bylaw. Yeah. Uh, something I prefer, but yeah. Um, and I, I just oh, had one. No, no, I just had one more. One more thing. I'm just wondering uh, to Mr. Mr. Dunn's uh, objections in in the first section. If you'd feel more comfortable with with something around, and I don't want to get into too much wordsmithing. I know we're going to ask mm -hmm. council to do that, but but just laying out the new design shall incorporate as its greatest priority pedestrian safety, consistent with state and federal regulations, yada, 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 rather than saying to the greatest extent feasible. I think that's where you were nervous. Going in the right if direction. I read you up. Yeah, you know, you're going in the right direction, but I'm not sure. I, I, I mean, obviously, I, 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 presumably we're going to defer yeah. to town council. To, uh, no, I agree with um, my colleagues that I do support this. Um, however, with, uh, in regards to reporting, a uh, question for Adam, how many roads are actually designed or redesigned per year that this would be applicable to? So that, that's a good question. I, I would defer to Mr. Rademacher, but to some degree, every time a road is repaved, if we're looking at redesigning the, the curb cuts and the handicap ramps, 
potentially you know, changing the layout of the road. It depends on what the scope of this bylaw would be. I, I don't know if you want to talk, Mike, about a simple repaving. You know, is there always something that could push it to a redesign? Is it, is it not a redesign? Yeah, that, that's kind of what, I, what I'm starting to question now as well, is what, where does this design or redesign kind of begin and end as you know, in this policy that we're about to set. And I think that's important before we do, you know, add any, especially reporting methods to it. Sure, thank you. Um, uh, it, it can cause some confusion, potentially. Uh, there are often roads that we will repave that have no sidewalks. Uh, and would, would this now require that we have to construct sidewalks for, uh, to meet the bylaw? I feel that we may have trouble um, measuring this metric as we move forward on different projects. What, what is uh, the greatest extent possible of pedestrian safety? It's very uh, loose. So uh, I think that we may, we may have some difficulties enforcing this bylaw uh, with some of the projects that we put forth. Um, when we have a full-on design, such as Mass Ave Corridor, or when we did Forest Street, uh, there's a, another project in the center of town. Um, they, they follow state, federal guidelines and Americans with Disabilities Act guidelines for slope and cross section and, and um, surface condition of uh, sidewalks and crosswalks and so forth that set a pretty good guideline for pedestrian safety. Uh, I'm not sure what more can be measured. Thank you. Um, no. Just one, one more. Um, yeah, no, so with that being said, I do, I do think that, you know, making a point that um, if we are trying to craft a bylaw that, you know, has a point that we are certainly considering, you know, this, you know, safety, public safety to be, you know, a top priority of ours. But I don't, I think that we have to, you know, kind of be, try to find some specifics that we can add to it that, you know, aren't going to basically, you know, could potentially bankrupt our DPW budget at the same time. Um, I think that I'd be, you know, I'm comfortable with the idea. I just I'm worried about the implementation of it. Um, so that's fair. Sean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Sean Harrington, Precinct 15. Um, I didn't expect to come up and speak here, so I'm, it's a little bit off the cuff. Um, and it's really about information that was used um, to advance this Warren article. As someone who is active within the Massachusetts Republican Party, I have met my fair share of Tea Party activists. What um, the gentleman was referring to was something that certain people who affiliate themselves with the Tea Party call Agenda 21. Um, I know, I won't say that I'm friends with them, but I've met them. They've, you, they've talked about it before. They're in great detail. And really, it does not refer to what the gentleman is talking about. Um, and I will even say, I don't know much about the issue. I quite honestly am not worried about it. It's not even on my radar. But I think the point needs to be made that this isn't, you know, it's not as if the Tea Party or groups that affiliate themselves as Tea Party or Occupy are pushing to stop bicycles on streets or stuff. It's a little bit, uh, it, it's far more complicated than that. And it should be really used to thrown around to advance a Warren article. That's just my point of view. Knowing people who are active with that group I, I just think it's, a, and knowing them who live in Arlington, I just think it needs to be clear that this issue does not affect, is not really, a, that issue is not really about bicycles on Mass Ave. It's a lot more complicated, a lot more detailed. I don't even know all the details. It's just, you know, I just want to correct a little bit of information from what I know from what my personal experience has been, has been very active with conservatives and the Republican Party in Massachusetts. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mark Kepline, Precinct 7. Um, for my benefit and the people at home, can we have a quick reading of the current language? Um, I only the language isn't developed until after the hearing. Mark, oh, okay. So. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to sort of echo Mr. Rademacher's points and Mr. Dunn's points. Um, I, I found the proposed article that was very uh, unspecific uh, to be overly broad and and really difficult to enforce and um, you know and I'm uh, grappling with what it 
means. I, I think everyone agrees that pedestrian safety is vital along with water and sewer and police and fire. Uh, we don't have bylaws on those, but uh, requiring those or, uh, you know, and, and how do we actually implement this one? Uh, it, it turns out for pedestrian safety, this sort of a law of diminishing returns as far as what you can do, this feature or that feature. Uh, one of the most effective ones is putting a sidewalk where there isn't one. And again, if, if you go and you have to put sidewalks on every street, you repave and purchase land from private individuals or, or do easements, you know, there's considerable cost to the town. The next most effective pedestrian safety uh, feature is, is a raised median. And, uh, you know, can we put raised medians on major roadways everywhere? Uh, or at least, um, say, uh, a little island at a, at a, where there's an intersection? Um, that becomes problematic, too. Because, for example, in the center project, uh, the proposal is to take away the center median in order to put in bike lanes. So that would prohibit you from putting in bike lanes or else require you to lose the parking in front of Cambridge Savings. So th th there's a lot of issues. Um, and then going down the line and even uh, other pedestrian treatments that are, there have little proof of effectiveness. There's the bump outs and uh, road narrowing and uh, the, the, the benefits are really scant and, and difficult to quantize at all to know what your what your you know what benefit you're getting against the costs uh, to to other modes and and other peoples like will this benefit pedestrians at all you know for the given costs uh, so that's the problem um, you know and it might mean you you want to take parking off the street because cars can block visibility of pedestrians you know is do you want to do that <laughs> you know do you want to ban heavy trucking from all roads so that you know, if a pedestrian gets hit by a dump truck or a, a garbage truck or an MBTA bus, they're likely to be injured much more severely than if they got hit by a car. Uh, so it's, it's really a slippery slope and, you know, you have to put in pedestrian signals at every crosswalk. Uh, so I'm not sure how you're going to go about and implement the, you know, the idea, although, you know, it's a, it's a really good intention, but it, it's really difficult to to quantify and clearly define. Thank, Thank you. you. Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Carr Jones, um, member of the Transportation Advisory Committee and the committee's liaison to walking in Arlington. I'm here primarily tonight to apologize that the committee wasn't able to, um, you know, submit a uh, memo or anything advising the board on, um, on this article. We received it and discussed it at the last meeting, um, but didn't have enough time to, to formulate uh, any, you know, specific recommendation to you. But I will say that, that our discussion at the meeting was similar to your discussion here before, um, you know, anybody got up, where many of us were sympathetic to the sentiments of the, um, of the article or the, you know, the Warren article, and that we're, um, you know, we try in our work to um, balance all of the modes of transportation in town in our recommendations. So, you know, we consider all of the modes a priority, you know, in the same way. Um, we did have some concerns about um, sort of playing out different extreme scenarios and how these might uh, be affected by a bylaw. Um, and there was, you know, some question as to whether or not a bylaw is the right, uh, excuse the pun, vehicle for, for this sort of, um, uh, you know, work in the town. So I just wanted to report uh, that that's where we are. And if, if um, you would like the committee to uh, prepare something for your um, uh, review, we can do that, but we did not have time before tonight's hearing. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes, Mr. Carroll. I, th I, I think that we should take the attack uh, up on their offer. So I'm wondering when 
when when do you believe would be feasible to uh... well I do not set the agendas so <laughs> <laughs> I I, um, I I don't know uh, whether we can work out um, you know perhaps with Marie yeah I believe our meeting our next meeting is on the 13th is that you have the some second meeting? Wednesday We may we may be able to uh, second Wednesday we meet um, so we should have uh, enough time to prepare for that so that we can vote on something at the meeting if if that's what you'd like us to do. So can I move to ta table this pending the the, the TAC uh, recommendation? So that's a motion. Yep. Is there a second? Second. But it seemed to hurt you to say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, my mind is actually much, on the much on the bigger question. I'm having real debates yeah. with myself could, on, on, on what the right before thing you is. completely dismiss this. Could could I just say one other thing? Having listened, yeah. Although I I don't, I don't think we're saying we're dismissing it, right? Do, do you know what I mean? I mean we're just saying tabling. We'd like to hear tax input. Okay. Well, so I, 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 I did want to mention um, uh, that I did go to the TAC meeting, um, and uh, they were they are awfully busy, uh, but they were generous enough to spend about five minutes uh, talking to me, and I tried to incorporate what I heard. These scenarios, the sidewalk scenario came up, the school scenario came up, um, and that's where those three words came from about the programmatic and fiscal uh, scope. Oh, which yeah, it, seems, it seems to me answer those kinds of problems. If they don't, maybe we can come up with wording that does. Um, the uh, other thing I'm hearing is uh, limit the applicability so it doesn't apply to like, hey, we're just putting some new pavement down. I'm okay with that. I was thinking of big road projects and if there's a way to characterize that in a way that is sort of technically clean, I'd like to include that. Uh, and uh, toning down the mandate, I'm also okay with that. I don't want to make it so weak that instead of sort of taking pedestrian safety off the table, it puts it back on the table. Um, I would also like to say that I think nobody likes to be told what to do, even if what you're telling them to do is what they would already do, and maybe even especially in that case. However, if we don't do that, then you guys are the focus of this debate, and the town staff is the focus of the debate. If we can do something like this, then at least we can say about pedestrian safety, hey, we decided this already. It's done. Mr. Dunn. Um, I was just reminded of the bylaw that we have related to us um, making green purchases, especially around vehicles, and I wonder if there's a model there and I honestly, I, I, this is really just, a, I have not looked at this closely enough myself, but I'm remembering we passed that in town meeting and I wonder if there, and it, it, I remember that it gave us the ability to, it said wait green, but don't do something foolish. <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, you know, I, I think you're onto something when you referenced, you know, do we somehow define the size of project here? that we're talking about. So you've compromised already, you've compromised after the Transportation Advisory first hearing, you've, you've compromised after what we've said tonight. What I'd ask you to do, if, if you would, Adam, is would you also uh, talk with Michael again in terms of that, you know, every time a street is repaved, how, how do we define it in such a way that, you know, we had a water main break uh, recently uh, did that require some design, a redesign of a curb or something? I don't know. Uh, uh, and then tack again, and if you don't mind, come back to us. Because uh, what I'm hearing is we're trying to work with you to find a way to do it. Uh, so just a little more patience, if That's you would, please. Okay? All right, so on the motion uh, by Ms. Curo and seconded, which is we're tabling <coughs> this until... Um, uh, well, basically, Adam has had a chance to meet with TAC again and any others you think are necessary and the input we've given you tonight and come back to us. Marie, what are we saying on the 25th? On the 18th. On the 18th, on March 18th. So j just that I know, when is TAC's next meeting? The 13th. 13th. 
Uh, 13 okay. is what Elizabeth thought, right? It, second Wednesday. Second Wednesday, whatever. So the 18th was certainly, well, no, the 18th couldn't be the second Monday, obviously. It would have to be at least the third, right? Okay. Uh, all righty. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you. Uh, Article 21, uh, Mr. Evans uh, Maurice, if I'm saying that correctly, is sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Evans Maurice. Uh, I'm here to discuss the home rule legislation. Uh, I work as a police officer for Harvard University, and I would like to work for the town of Arlington, but due to my age, I can't lateral over to Arlington because Harvard is not a civil service department. So I go by taking a civil service exam, but because Arlington does not recognize the age, age yes. that I can't get my score to be seen on the Arlington list. Okay. Now, I understand the town and the fees and trying to put somebody through the academy. I've already have, I have all of that. I actually went to the academy with some of your Arlington officers a few years ago. So all I'm asking is to just have, I guess, a special consideration for my circumstance to be able to be seen on the list of Arlington. Yep. Okay. Uh, so questions or a motion? Yeah, Mr. Dunn. Uh, how long have you been working in law enforcement? Five years. Okay. Are you a veteran, sir? Maybe? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Carroll, who's there? Oh, Mr. S uh, Mr. Byrne, yeah. So, and you said that, how long ago did you go through the academy? Uh, in 2008. 2008. Yes. Um, I'm ready to, to move approval that the, t the board uh, recommend approval of this. Um, I will say that I know it's, it's, it's sometimes controversial. I will also say that I know that the police chief and the, uh, and the fire chief have in the past recommended against these. Um, it's one of the few times that I disagree with them and I respect them a lot, but at the same time, I, I'm, I'm, I remain it's one of the things that, um, you know, as a town meeting member long before I was a selectman, we've looked at a lot of these, and I just can't reconcile with myself the age requirement that we put in there. I think that there's got to be a better way, and I just have a really hard time telling someone that they can't have a job because of how old they are. So for all those reasons, um, I move mm -hmm. approval. Is there a second? Um, I'll, I'll second, but is not for the same reasons as Mr. Dunn. Um, mostly because you do already have the academy, and I know that costs an awful lot of money to the town. And right. um, you know, going through, if look, the you know, good thing about these is we can look at it on a case by case basis. You know, with that, you know, really huge expense out of the way, I'm comfortable moving forward in this situation. Okay, okay. Mr. Kerr. Yeah, I'm generally not not favorably disposed to these petitions. Um, I think I am willing to go along with, with, with this one in this case also because you have the academy and because you've been working in, in law enforcement. Um, from my point of view, it, it has to really be a, 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 um, a special circumstance where there are certain benefits that are, that are brought forward. I, know, I recall, I think we all recall uh, an applicant a number of years ago who had um, served overseas in Iraq or Afghanistan and had worked in law enforcement in the military and that was why you couldn't but whereas you're in law enforcement um, now and have had that some cost of training uh, I'm, I'm willing to go along with the motion yeah uh, uh, I echo uh, the board sentiments and certainly Dan's point I know Adam might not be thrilled with us the police and the fire chief but I have always felt that if a person that age has for a long time now, you know, um, 32 is the old 22, and you know, uh, my 62 is, well, the old 21 or so, I guess. So, uh, but if you qualify, if you, if you meet the standards, you do well on the test, you do well on the interviews, you obviously present yourself well, I think you have every right to try for it. Thank you. Uh, so I, I, I believe I've supported every one of these that have ever come before me, so I certainly support it too. Uh, any other? Yeah. A point of clarification, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, in the past, uh, the reports that I've seen to town meeting uh, on these, and I haven't done too many of them, did include uh, a statement as to what the applicant's actual age was. Okay. I don't have that information. Uh, 41. Okay. 41. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, 
Our vote is not making you an Arlington police officer. No, 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 not at all. I just want right. consideration to have my score. What we're saying be. is uh, let you go ahead as if you were 32 years old and, right. and right. interview and go through the process exactly. and earn it. Exactly. I'm sure you good luck. On Thank that. you. Yeah. Um, done. Do I remember past ones that we put an expiration date? Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, and, but you'll include that in the final language for us to do. Yeah, that's Thank you. Start. Please. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Meaning what? He is one year. Uh, it's from the length of the list is what I think the previous votes have been. Okay. And so for the, like so the, per, the 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 we will recommend to town meeting the town meeting approve him being permitted to join the list and the right. list has a expiration date. Right. You can't come. Yeah. Right. Mr. Maurice is yes. It? Yes. Yeah. Clear on everything? Yes, I am. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. All those opposed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thank luck. You, and uh, Article 41, uh, appropriation in uh, eminent domain, Route 60, Mass Avenue, uh, mobi mobility improvement project easements. Mr. Rademacher. Thank you. These are always long, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Always fun. Uh, so I, if you all remember, it wasn't too long ago we came and presented some different options for a project that we are pursuing in the center of town that will uh, hopefully uh, make improvements for um, mobility of pedestrians, uh, vehicles, and bicyclists, and other users of the Minuteman path through um, the intersection with uh, Mass Ave and Route 60. So that design has been progressed and we're at a 25% level. Um, I think within the next month and a half, Mass Highway will be advertising for a design public hearing for that project. And as part of uh, the design process, we have identified uh, several easements that will be required in order to construct portions of that project, mostly um, handicap ramp. Uh, pedestrian ramps which seems to be the norm for projects when you're trying to fit something in where it didn't fit before to build proper um, <coughs> proper and safe pedestrian handicap ramps uh, will require some temporary construction easements and some permanent easements I believe there's ten total uh, five of permanent five of temporary something of that nature that'll be refined a little bit as the project moves forward but it's similar to uh, the process we used when we did the Safe Routes to School project at the Dallin School and the Mass Ave process, uh, we would uh, get um, the values of these easements and make that uh, known to the different property owners and purchase these by eminent domain, if, if agreed upon. Motion. I move approval. Second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, item number eight. It's final votes and comments based on the hearings we've already conducted. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Everything's been unanimous tonight, I think, so far. Hmm. Item nine, Mr. Byrne, the non-binding ballot question on an overnight parking ban. Um, uh, this is from our discussion last week, and um, I worked with town council to come up with some language for the ballot question. Um, kept it fairly simple, I don't think, um, it will confuse anyone on election day. Uh, it's a simple yes or no vote to, do you favor lifting the town's current overnight parking ban? Um, I, you know, we looked at a few different options, but I think that this was the most straightforward. Um, and that gets, and I do also believe that it gets kind of to the crux of the argument um, in this situation. And, uh, you know, that being said, we can look at the data after the election and uh, some whichever way we'd like, but I think this is um, you know, a very strong way to move forward. Um, so that you're making that motion, I assume, yes. that we put this on the ballot. Is there a second? Second. Um, I, I, I almost wonder, although you've used town council and she's <laughs> far brighter than I ever am, whether we, if, would a paragraph follow this that actually explains what the current parking ban is? No. Under state law, we cannot put in, under state law, it's currently 
in place in Arlington, we do not have the ability to put in any kind of summary or explanation. Uh. I, I, then I almost wonder whether the question should read, just remove the word lifting. Do you favor the town's current overnight parking ban? Hmm. I worry about the word lifting. I don't know why. It just didn't yeah. hit me. I, hmm. I have to admit I had the exact same reaction. And the reason I have the reaction is because, not to get too te technical or grammatical here, but um, a noun. The subject in this sentence is, well, looks, I think a lot of people, if they look at it quickly, are going to think it's the ban. And then they, they may vote the wrong way if you have right. lifting in, right. in there. Because they're voting, do you favor, they're actually voting, do you favor the lifting? I'm afraid if somebody reads it quickly, they're going to, they may mistakenly read, do you favor mm -hmm. the ban? Do you favor the town's current overnight parking ban? Yes or no? Yeah. But you, you must have thought about that, so. Um, you know, um, um, we're, that's why we're aboard, is to listen to other suggestions. Well, no, and I, I, um, do you have strong feelings why you put in lifting versus? Um, you know, well, we tossed around a few different options. Um, I did think that lifting, you know, do you favor lifting the town's current overnight parking ban? I'm, I was very comfortable with that. But if, um, you know, I'm also fine with removing it and um, going about it that route. So uh, we can put it to a vote, I guess. Well, yeah, but this is your question. I, don't, I want you to be comfortable. I mean, no, yeah, I am very comfortable. No, I, I think that we will, we will get the same results either way. So oh, I am comfortable with that. Thank you. I, I, I honestly feel there could be confusion reading it, uh, a quick reading of it. Because um, Kevin and I were confused, apparently. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's only 50% of us, so it's not you know, a large group. Yes, Mark, quickly, please. Uh, this isn't a hearing. Yeah. <laughs> I've, well, had a little, I've had a little practice on wording these things, and it is a difficult thing. Uh, I might suggest relaxing, um, because y you also want some sort of indication from the voters a, a way to move forward. So, you know, if you say removing, uh, that's a little broad, or if you say relaxing, that sort of in it gives you a direction to head. Um, uh, but, but that also would, that implies, doesn't it, we're going to continue some yeah, sort of part. Re relaxing was actually an option that we looked over, and we, and I kind of said no because it doesn't have any, you know, real meaning to it towards it. You know, relaxing is not, you know, an actual, yeah. you know, real action that we could implement following. Yeah, so, well, but I appreciate your yeah. Lifting is discussion. a little uh, has multiple meanings, but if you said you know removing or something, uh, yeah. that might be more specific. Yeah. Thanks. Is it possible to put in the voters note the voters book any kind of description? The voters book. Well, the information to voters that's that's mailed out. That comes from the state. Oh, state. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, thanks you. I mean, we'd have to include in the sentence something like. Currently, Arlington bans parking overnight from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. Do you favor continuing this practice? I mean, that's uh, the only way you can get an explanation. And no, you don't let that. I don't think we can. No. Oh, we can't even do that? Oh. Well, I okay. think. Yep. Joe? I, I think to Mr. Kaplan's uh, note, though, uh, yeah, the state, uh, yeah. We, don't, we don't send out a book, but, you know, you might want to. Um, contact the legal women voters. I'm sure they'll put a summary of anything that's going to be on the ballot. Well, perhaps our friends in the media will be able to put something like that in there. Okay, so make a motion. Do you want to leave lifting in there or do you want to remove it? Well, I, um, we can remo I'm comfortable removing it. So, so then, so the motion, your motion is do, um, do you favor the town's current overnight parking ban? That's your motion? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Um, I'm a little hung up on the word favor, but I'm going to say yes anyway. <laughs> I could, let's just talk it out. Let me, no, humor me, actually. Sure. Let's okay. just talk it out a little bit, and then I'll probably come around. Do you favor. agree? Uh, I was thinking support. Do you support? Yeah, but yeah. favor versus, versus support. I, I, one of the phrases I've always loved is a, a camel is a horse that was made by a committee. Yeah. 
any time you try and write a sentence or a paragraph by committee, yep. you know what I mean? It's, it's all but. So, but go ahead, Dan. So That's all I've got. And if, if you, if people... But what, what, what word were you landing on? What, what, do you... Um, I was, I hadn't landed on one. Right. Um, I was definitely, I had, I was tossing around support. And so the phrase, so it would read, do you support the town's current overnight parking ban? And... Uh, Favor is probably good. Uh, favor is just as good. You know, we're looking for their opinion. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? And favor is more an opinion. Okay. Support is more an action, isn't it? Oh, well, yeah? Yeah. The irony is that support and the lift are, are synonyms, but we're using them in totally opposite yeah. ways. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with favor. The motion is, the question on the ballot by Mr. Byrne, do you favor the town's current overnight parking ban, yes or no? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. I, you had second with it, right, Mr. Kirill? Yes, I had. Okay. Yes, I had. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it. Okay, Adam, lease extensions for the international school. And Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, I need to ask, do you know who I can talk to about getting earlier on the agenda? This if, if I were you, I'd look to the left. <laughs> Supposedly, I'm in charge of this thing. <laughs> um, so the item before us is in regards to the two current tenants under lease at the Farm Mentor School, uh, the International School of Boston, as well as the Arlington Children's Center. Uh, they've both been long-term tenants, uh, and their current lease has expired as of the close of FY13 on June 30th this year. Uh, so before the board tonight, uh, is a vote to approve the extension of the leases for one year for each tenant to the close of FY14, which would allow the town to enter into uh, a larger, uh, more broad RFP process this fall, uh, or even late summer, uh, to consider a long-term tenancy, and the design of an RFP is something we can discuss, uh, but want to discuss with the board uh, going forward, uh, how long a tenancy we'd like in the future, <coughs> how we would treat an RFP, whether or not we would look at the two current condos, for lack of a better term, that each tenant exists, or if we look at the whole facility. So those are still some issues we need to hash out, but we have good tenants that want to be in the building and need some stability in the course of their next program year. Uh, so that's why we put a one-year lease before the board for approval tonight. Uh, also in the board's material, was a, a quick analysis on uh, where the proposed rent for this extension year falls against uh, our approximation of market rate. So in 2010, the town hired RKG Associates to do uh, a study on the uh, market rent and uh, potential uses for both the Farm Mental School and the Crosby School. As we know, the Crosby School's been sold, but the data uh, for the Farm Mental School is still in use in this analysis. So uh, if we look at the rent that was collected in 2011, uh, there was a gap between uh, what this study had showed as market rent when we were collecting the rent, about $14,000 or a difference of 7.8. Three uh, percent, with the proposed uh, lease amendments that are before you tonight, uh, the gap would actually be uh, only forty-four hundred dollars, or two point two nine percent. So, uh, over the course of the past several years, uh, the town, through the, the prior leases, closed the gap uh, with a three percent increment. Uh, again, in the leases before you, we've come closer to closing that gap, uh, and we can certainly add market rent and what the town is expecting to get from the building in the larger RFP that we could do. I love the sentence. This reduces the delta between market rent and actual rent. I move to approve the uh, leases as presented by the uh, town manager. Second. Second. Discussion? Sir? Um, Adam, uh, we talked about uh, when you t asked me about this previously, that, and I just wanted to hear what the other parties think about this plan. They're, they're comfortable with this plan. They've actually signed, uh, both bodies have signed lease extensions uh, for just one year, and they're very interested in seeing what the town develops as an RFP going forward. I think they're, I think they like the space, they'd like to be there, and they, they want to figure out what the future holds that they have the space. Okay. All those in the paper, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Uh, next, let's keep on with Mr. Chapter Lane. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, last fall, uh, we had a discussion with the board, or I had a discussion with the board, in regards to uh, establishing a performance evaluation process for the town manager. 
And uh, stemming from that discussion, myself along with the chairman uh, met with the HR director to take a look at um, different versions of uh, an evaluation instrument that we had received from a number of other communities. So uh, in that meeting, we made some revisions to the instrument that uh, is actually used in need on the Central National Midwest. Uh, that revised instrument is before the board in their packet tonight. Uh, so what I'm asking for the board to do is to, after some discussion, approve that instrument and kick off the town manager's evaluation process. Uh, yesterday was actually uh, a one-year anniversary of the contract execution, so it's officially one year on the job yesterday. Congratulations. Thank you. So it's, it's right time uh, to begin an evaluation process. Uh, also, as part of the evaluation laid out in the instrument uh, was the production of a narrative self-evaluation by me along, and I included in that an update on the goals that the board adopted uh, in August of 2012. Uh, that was provided to the board tonight. Uh, so the, the schedule laid out uh, in a memo provided to the board uh, begins tonight with a discussion and approval of the, the evaluation instrument, um, completion of the evaluation instrument over the course of the next week and a half, uh, delivery of the completed instruments to the chairman on what do we have, March 6th. Uh, the chairman would then work with the HR director to compile uh, the evaluations into one consolidated document to then be discussed at the board's next meeting on March 11th. Uh, so that's, I'm happy to get the board's feedback on the process and interested in starting the process. Talk to me, my brothers. Well, Mr. Chair, oh, sir. I'd like to suggest that we, uh, based on our, our success at uh, rewording uh, the one-sentence ballot question, that we take the next 360 minutes to rewrite the uh, evaluation. <laughs> well, um, but seriously, I, I would, I'd like to move to approve the evaluation mm -hmm. instrument. Um, if I could get a second, I'll speak. Yeah, I mean, if you remember this, we had, was it four instruments, five instruments yeah, yeah, yeah. we had mm -hmm. provided before? And uh, we kind of already had looked through and people yeah. inputted at that point. And then we agreed Adam, uh, Karen, and I would sit down. And uh, I certainly am comfortable with this. Are as, we being as, asked to vote to approve, to approve this tonight? Yeah, I think that would be, yeah. Yeah, just, just to make sure that. If I move to approve the, the, the instrument. Uh, and the and I would include in that vote the process, which the process. is, you, when do they do return to me? I forget. March 6th. March 6th. Is that okay with people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then it's my job to meet with Karen and we consolidate it because the individual ones would not be released as a public document, but the compiled one would be. And this is town council's review of the process and this is all. So well, the, the, individual, the individual documents would be available to the public, but the document that would be discussed and provided to me and then put in the personnel file would be the consolidated document. So each individual one, if the public wanted to see it. It's in the public realm. Okay. No. Oh, okay. Is that all right with everybody? Yeah. I guess, I guess it just goes towards. Um, it's just worth commenting that, uh, un unlike the reviews that of a lot of people that are private, uh, one of the, um, you know, joys of being working in the public domain is that the review ends up being in the public, and that there is a certain awkwardness about that. But at the same time, because of the nature of the job, the role that we play, and the job. That Mr. Chapelain holds, it's kind of, it, it is somewhat, it's inevitable. And so um, I just want to, I mean, I, I think we should just call out the fact that it is a little bit awkward, but at the same time, even everything, the things that we write in these documents are available to a public records request if someone really wanted to. Okay, thank you for that. Any other discussion? All those in favor of approval of the document, please signify by saying aye. 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 I will follow up personally with Mrs. Mahan, who couldn't be with us here tonight just in case she feels there should be any change to the document but I'll, you know can we uh, marie can we get it delivered to her or delivered to tomorrow okay mr chair could i could i also ask if it's possible to get an electronic copy of this so that we can type up our our, our feedback oh, please so okay so do it leave it that way let adam electronic <coughs> copy all of us or or, or marie you should I, but let's, I, I agree, but I think electronically would be uh, uh, much easier for us to yeah. fill it out. I, I would like to note that. And uh, then you can electronic it, electronic it to me. 
<laughs> Send it to me. <laughs> Technological dinosaur here by the sixth. Yes. Just uh, one is unsatisfactory, which uh, I'd like everyone to be aware of, because I remember at college I had oh, yeah. one was you know oh, yeah. uh, the opposite. <laughs> so yeah. the higher the score, the better. <laughs> Fair enough. On this one. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay. Thanks. Anything else, Mr. Chaplain? Uh, no, but I know that. Okay, new business. Ms. Kropelka, I know we have an executive session, but we'll do, because we'll come out, am I correct, Julian? We're coming out of executive session only for the purposes of adjourning, correct? Right? Okay, so let me do new birth, new, new business. Man, am I getting tired or what? New business, Juliana. I will have a piece of new business. Wow. Yes. Ooh. And it's only to report that the Arlington High School girls varsity hockey team <laughs> won their game tonight in the first round of the Alliance MIA do I detect any maternal pride? Pardon? Do I detect any maternal pride? Uh, number 10. <laughs> <laughs> and her last year of, uh, of high school. Is there anything else happening in number 10's life today? Number 10 is her 18 today. As well. So we all wish her a happy birthday as yes. well. I do forget her name. I'm sorry, Julie. Amelia. Amelia. Happy birthday. Uh, new business, Mr. Chapman. And so two pieces of new business. First, I wanted to share with the board that Senator Donnelly has filed as one of his budget priorities a uh, reimbursement for the town for the microburst costs from July of 2012. And I know we shared that request uh, with the House side of the delegation. So uh, I'm very thankful uh, that he did that. And uh, I, I told him that I'd express that, uh, his efforts to the board. Uh, second, um, we we all know that we have a hearing tomorrow night yeah. uh, in regards to the Mass Ave uh, corridor project. So very briefly, I think some of the other board members might want to speak about uh, the, the project, but I just wanted to quickly say that the hearing is going to be conducted by Mass EOT. Uh, Marie Rose, a Mass EOT employee, will chair the hearing. Uh, there will be some public notices read at the beginning, uh, an introduction uh, by Mike Rademacher, a uh, presentation by Faith Buff and Thorndike, the town's engineer, on the project and changes that have been made from 25% uh, design to 75%. Uh, following that, we'll allow for public comment first from federal, state, and local officials, uh, and then we'll open up to public comment uh, for those in attendance. So that will be the, the agenda for tomorrow night. But let me follow up with that, if, if I may, because I appreciate that local officials have, a, have the opportunity what I'd like, like to ask my colleagues is, do you each want to speak tomorrow night, or would you like me as chair uh, uh, to speak on behalf of the board? I'll tell you what I intend on basically saying, if you want to approve that. Or if each of you want to speak, please. Here, I'm a little worried that after a number of speakers that we're going to run out of things to say no. uh, that we're not going to. I mean, my basic approach is I really want to thank um, federal Housing and the Department of Transportation for this project, uh, for bearing with us for these five years. It's a very exciting opportunity for the town of Arlington. It's a very necessary project, and uh, just I want to thank them on behalf of us that they uh, have come this far with us, and we look forward to working with them through the completion of it. Uh, that's basically what I intended on saying, you know, versus any, because I really do believe every argument why it's necessary, what we need to do is going to be brought up beforehand, uh, before I get up there to speak, uh, where local officials uh, come down. So, Or is there anything you want me to say in particular? Or again, I have no problem if each of you want to get up there and speak. I'm just tell me how you want to handle it. My intention had been to defer to you as chair. And to uh, to allow that, because I I get a sense that the the board and we can take a formal vote, but I think that we're more or less on the same page as far as this this project is concerned. I, I think you represent us well um, in that. Um, you know, I've been reminded, and I'm sure others of us have been reminded that we we all do, um, however, have the, the the right and and may want to avail ourselves of it to. Um, send individual testimony, written testimony to uh, Mass DOT. Well, or, or I'll tell you, when I finish tomorrow night, I'll turn to any of you who are there and say, is there anything you want to add or anything you want to? Yeah, okay. You know, I, I don't write out my speeches. That probably surprises everybody, you know, so it, there's a chance I could go off script a little bit, <laughs> since there is no script to begin with. 
Uh, I don't want to say anything that the rest would be uncomfortable with. I mean, I believe in every uh, recent instance, this board has been unanimous in their support yeah. of this project. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Dan, you want to comment? Uh, or? Uh, my only... We can also wait till tomorrow night and answer me then if you yeah. want. Okay. No, no, I, I can tell you what I was, what I was thinking. So, um, I want to make sure... Uh, so we don't know exactly what's going to be said before us. Like right. I haven't read the pre presentations. I don't know exactly what it is. Right. Um, and I know that sometimes um, we get caught up talking about, like, uh, arguing with the opponents about what the, some of their arguments. And one of the things that I just want to make really sure comes in some of the early speakers. And if it's not done already, then I'd hope that you would then make the case, which is laying out like the basic reasons why we think that this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And the, the case, the arguments that I would make are um, pedestrian safety. Mm -hmm. uh, I would talk about uh, improved traffic traffic flow with upgraded technology. Mm -hmm. I'd talk about um, uh, better business, you know, like making it a town that works better uh, for the businesses there, making you know better sight lines, better flow, better parking. Should yeah. I slow down? While you yes, hold on. Go, go now. <laughs> go. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so pedestrian safety. Improved traffic through, flow through technology. Right. Uh, improved uh, commercial environment, I guess is the phrase that I'm trying to, mm -hmm. to, to get across there. Um, and last but certainly not least, renewing an infrastructure that it's re that's really decaying. I mean, we've got sidewalks, we've got holes, we've got, you know. Traffic lights that can't be repaired. Yeah, stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so I, I think sometimes in the you know, the back and forth over the years, we lose track of sometimes explicitly saying why we think this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. right. And so if that case is not made before you get up there, yes, I would appreciate if you would make it. Yes. Yeah. I, I would also add this is a, an all Arlington project. There's been this impression it's East Arlington, and we even call it East Arlington, but the Heights in the center travel through there and shop there, eat there quite regularly, and, and uh, it's as important to all of them. Um, Adam and I have talked through this a bit, and believe me, all of these, I believe, are going to be okay. touched on. Good. I just didn't want to get to where I'm repeating the same things over and over again. And... And this is Adam's advice as well, and I think it's very good advice. Uh, this isn't a point-on-point -point debate with anybody. Right. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, th this is a, a very necessary, needed project that that can have a tremendous impact on the town of Arlington uh, mm -hmm. in many, many positive ways. And I hope we move it from East Arlington through the center at some point in the future as well. But it's five years now. Let's go. Um, did I misstate anything there, Adam? Or? No, that's, that's it, Steve, anything you want to add? Um, you know, I was did you really to, want to speak either? Um, well, you know, I think that if uh, you leave it open-ended, if anyone else wants to come up, I'm sure that you'll hit it. I just keep thinking about Bill Clinton's speech at the convention, and uh, I think he just said, it's arithmetic. <laughs> and, um, you know, I just keep seeing that come up, and I feel like it could be implemented here as well. But, um, no, I think uh, Mr. Dunn covered uh, just about everything that I would have liked to say as well. Okay. But, I, 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 again, I'm not trying to hold anybody off from speaking, and I will, you know, we'll, we'll see each other tomorrow night to whatever degree we all uh, are able to do that. Okay, sorry. Then. That's all I have now from you. Okay. No, that's, you know, I'm good tonight. And I'm going to, in advance, say I have no new business because I'm feeling a little tremor beside me. So before I get there, Mr. Kiro. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, I uh, attended the MWRA uh, meeting last week. I think I referenced it earlier on uh, this evening. Um, they made a very good presentation about the project that's, that's, um, that, that they're bringing, bringing in. But uh, I think it should just be on our... Our radars. It's it's going to be two years. It's going to take two years. It's going to be temporarily disruptive to, to people along along those routes. And I'm sure that we'll we'll hear more. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of private ways that are that are involved, uh, primarily. Um, uh, Wayne Schwinard, the the, uh, the town engineer, was there and, and very helpful. And I think the MWRA did a great job at, at reaching out. And it was a very constructive um, meeting. Um, ATED is uh, going um, gangbusters, as, as you can probably tell. Um, 
the, some of the members were over at the FinCom this evening on a couple of warrant articles um, that are being presented for town, me town meeting this year. Um, the chair, um, Angela, would like to have the opportunity to come into the board sometime in the next couple of meetings uh, for a couple of purposes. Um, uh, one is um, just to give, not, not for a hearing, but to just give an overview of the warrant articles that ATED is presenting and, and ask if the board would would consider endorsing the, the warrant articles, especially considering one of them, the um, at least one of them, the visitor information booth, the semi-permanent structure, involves land that's under the board's control. Um, to talk about the uh, Arlington Alive um, um, uh, Arts Festival, July 13th, which, which we're working on, and which um, uh, the uh, committee may be looking to the board for some support on, around some, some issues, potentially parking and, and things like that. And also to talk to us about um, uh, Patriot's Day weekend, which um, uh, I don't want to steal Ms. Olszewski's thunder, but she'll have a specific request uh, around that too, um, which we're trying to make it a little bit more fun and, and uh, create some more identity. Uh, for, the, for the town around that, I'd like to defer that. So I just, um, if, if it's possible, the next meeting or two, if we could put put uh, her on the agenda, that would be that would be great. Yeah. And lastly, to end with what you began the meeting with, I would beg and plead that people go out and sign up for your library cards because hmm. Mr. Grilly laid down a challenge to me at the, at the last meeting. <laughs> Mr. And we're losing. <laughs> and Mr. <laughs> and we're losing. And Mr. Livergood followed up to thank me for taking you up on that challenge. So uh, I, I don't want to have to do it. <laughs> With, and, uh, <laughs> I don't think I'll hold you to it. Uh, I'll hold, hold myself yeah. to it. We'll see. <laughs> thank you. That's all I have. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Dunn. Um, Mass Ave is on my mind. Um, <coughs> the, Talking to people in the run-up to this meeting tomorrow, and talking about, uh, and, and also talking about the ballot question that's coming up in, that was put on by registered voters uh, in April. Um, when we had the hearing about that, uh, you know, when the opponents of the Mass Ave project came forward and talked to us, they said, you know, I, I suggested to them that their article was poorly phrased, and that it, uh, the way it's written is that it's written for only one answer, and that answer isn't actually an answer about the project itself. I mean, the question is, I mean, do you want four lanes in Arlington? And yes, I want four lanes in, the Arlington, in Arlington, and I want lower tax rates, and I want more public safety, and I want a pony. Yeah. But, and so yes, I want four lanes in Arlington, but what the Mass Ave project is not about just whether or not it's four lanes. It's a much, much, much more complex question. And in these conversations, people have said, Dan, why are we settling for this question on the ballot? Why aren't we putting a better question on the ballot or better questions that actually gets to the root of what the Mass Ave project is about? Because if we're going to, if voters are going to put their thought and time into answering a question, we should have them answer a question that actually means something. And so I am going to uh, talk to Juliana this afternoon and uh, so the deadline to put a non-binding ballot question on the ballot is 35 days before the, the election, election, which means that if we hand written notice to the town clerk on Friday, that, that it satisfies that legal requirement. And so I'm going to ask the chairman to schedule a unusual but regular, because it's a duly notified and duly noticed meeting for the morning of Friday. Uh, I know a couple of us are already planning on being in the office because of the CDBG hearing. And so if we could get a couple more, or you know, perhaps even the whole board, I would like... Um, CDBG hearing? Uh, so oh, you mean the, the subcommittee? The subcommittee, is meeting, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The subcommittee meets regularly, yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway. And so I, I, just, I, just, I put that date forward because I happen to know that a couple of us are, are already available. I'm open to other dates. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that we should avail ourselves of this, and I, am, I feel very strongly that we shouldn't, you know, Sometimes it takes a while for me to come to a boil. I've come to a boil on this one, and I want to put a question on the ballot. Okay. How early could you meet? Um, I could, 8 a.m.? Is that too late? I could do that. 
Yeah. I could do it, but I'm not sure I'm gonna. But I mean, <laughs> I mean no, no, no. I have, if we have a meeting, I'll yeah. be here. Um, uh, th this has been a strategy that you really discussed, and I thought both of us, when the original, you know, proponents were here of the of the now existing ballot question, uh, and we kind of said, okay, if you put that, if you do get the signatures, we'll put on other questions in their stead. Yeah. Not in their stead, in addition. In, in addition, right. Not, not, that's right. Their question is on because I got the uh, requisite number of signatures. The, it, in uh, uh, talking with a couple of other groups, and I don't want to name them right here because I think it's unf I don't want to do that. And if they want to come Friday morning, for example, I think they should be allowed to. Of course. But uh, it, talking about that as a strategy, let us ask a better question or a series of other questions related to it. The argument is they feel, uh, one particular group that would be quite active in this, that better to conduct a campaign that would explain what that question actually means mm -hmm. and just take on the question head on. Uh, 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 everybody knows I am running for re-election and I want people to know that I'm going to also run on uh, vote no on that question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in the past I, I ran on Sims before, I've run on an override before, uh, I have no hesitancy about it and so use whatever platforms I will have available to me going forward to talk about this project and that question. Now, uh, none of that says this isn't a good idea. Uh, what you're recommending, Dan, as well, okay? But I just want you to know that in discussions, and they have convinced me to a degree, this is a better strategy. Here's the question. It is not a simple question, but let me ask you this. Can we really come up with one that would be better and not confuse it further? I think we can. Okay. Um, but how about, th so, uh, and the, the good news is that as a chairman, you have a, some time to decide this one. Yes. Because we actually don't have, so if we were going to meet on Friday, we'd have to publish, uh, we'd have to post it first thing Wednesday morning. Yep. And so we've got the hearing tomorrow night. Yeah. Let's see how we feel tomorrow uh, yeah. see, Excuse me. Let's see how you feel because. Uh, no, no, yeah, I am, uh, I am more than glad to right now agree to a meeting Friday morning. But remember, Friday morning, we, we might also vote n not to put the question I, on. Isn't that fair? Absolutely. You know, yeah. so I'm more than glad to take the week on this, yeah. you know. And here's some wording because that, yeah. that to me will make a big difference. But, but I'm with you. That, uh, and I, you said it as well as it could be said that night, you know. Yeah. Uh, do you want free parking? Yeah. Do you want no taxes? Yeah. You know, I mean, so, uh, and as I said, I could say yes to it. N yes, I would like four, four lanes, but that's not practical, and it, uh, it's not called for, and the studies don't support it, and blah, blah, blah. So uh, let us agree to go ahead with a meeting for Friday morning at 8 a.m., and uh, God bless Dan and Juliana as they try and uh, come up with wording here, okay? Thank is, you, that, is that all right? Are you okay? Aiden? Yeah, I'm Friday looking morning. forward to it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not like nothing's planned Thursday night. <laughs> Would you be coming in by then? <laughs> Let us know. Okay. All right. So uh, make that that's a, uh, what do I do? I call a meeting for 8 a.m. Friday morning. We don't know about Mrs. Mahan, but uh, I'll tell you what can we do? Yeah. yeah. All right, so is there a, uh, what, what, do I, what do I need? Nothing. No, no. We have a meeting at 8 a.m. Friday morning, publish it, Marie, okay? Yeah, I think that's all it takes is your word. Okay. So, <laughs> God, why doesn't that work at home at 363? Yeah, Adam, sorry. I wanted to add one other, and I regret that saying this earlier. Uh, since the last time the board could uh, yeah, we all we lost Nancy. Oh, Nancy, my gosh. In our fight, oh, too. Uh, in our fight with pancreatic cancer, so... The services were held uh, last Friday and Saturday, and uh, there was an incredible turnout from Arlington. Uh, I know the family uh, felt very consoled by that, and we were very pleased to see the turnout from Arlington uh, at both uh, the wake uh, and the funeral. So, um, it's a very sad occasion, but I think it's an important for us to remember our service to Arlington. Uh, Nancy was a long-term deputy manager, and she served as our town manager for a year and a half. Uh, uh, did a spectacular job. Um, I must, Mr. Kira, we, we did go out to the wake. Um, the next morning I had another funeral mass that I had to attend. Uh, but uh, it, it was, it's quite a testimony to Nancy 
both how many from Arlington made that trip out there, and we are talking some country out there, aren't we, Joe? We are talking, you know, there's there's lots of land out there. I wish you could have moved some of it here for us. Holden is technically the town, right? Uh, but yeah, let, let's all take a moment of silence in, in memory of Nancy Gokowski. May God have mercy on her soul. I'm so sorry I didn't open with that. I meant to, and you know, haven't I my game that well tonight? Executive session. We're going into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation in accordance with General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3. We're having such discussion in open session will have a detrimental effect on the lit litigating position of the town. This is in response to a February 18, 2013 open meeting law complaint by Christopher Loretti. We will come out of executive session for the purpose of adjournment only. Juliana, did I say that correct? Absolutely. All right. Although, uh, we need a roll call, Marie. So, so, so moved. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Yes. 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 All right. We're in executive session.